A warm welcome back to Racing Post Live with the Betfair Exchange. Myself, Dave Orton, delighted to be back after a little break. We are renewed enthusiasm all the way. That is the watch phrase for us out there. Why? Because it's all change in the air out there. The crescendo of the flat season begins here, you lucky people. We have got nine races for you. That's right, we'll be covering all the terrestrial races for you here, giving you real-time analysis, reading out your feedback, all your comments. Absolutely fantastic. Cannot wait for this. Who have we got on the panel for you? That's what you're asking out there, no doubt. Well, the big bear himself is back. Graham Robway, how's the form, Graham? Uh, yeah, it's good actually. Yeah, yeah, going going well this week. So hopefully I'll continue today, Dave. Now you are, you said to me, I'm hoping for a Junkanoo moment. For people that don't know what that <laughs> is, a glorious Goodwood. We, I landed a right old touch, and we got absolutely crazy in here. You're hoping to maybe yeah, I, top up. Canoe. That's it. That's it. But you haven't got the sweat patches, which is <laughs> which is the first, which is a good start. Yeah, no, I got a little double going on the two hundred five at York Baronian Pride and the four. Ten at New Baronial Market. Pride. Baronial Pride and Surrey Pride. So a little bit of a name double for us. I've got that. A rainbow so, double. Yeah, so I'm hoping that they, they both win. But you say I backed them yesterday. And I logged on like about five hours later and Tom Siegel had tipped them both in his price wise column. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I got there first. <laughs> Piggybacking. And he's just stolen from me, hasn't he? Yeah, he's obviously <laughs> seen that I, that I fancy him and he's gone, oh, if G Rod fancies them, I must tip them on the price wise. <laughs> Pesky Tom Segal tipping your selections. Does that make you feel more confident? Or if you're not on, does that absolutely crush you because you've missed the price? Nothing that will crush us about Neil Hubbard being back on the panel as often. Betfair. Yeah, nice to be back, Dave. Looking forward to today. Happy some, days. Yeah, a bit of everything for, oh, or a bit of something for everybody today, I should yeah. say. We've got some jumps action. We've got some five furlong sprints. We've got mile and a half handicaps. So if... Yeah. Um, it, if there's not racing for you to enjoy today, then you're probably in the wrong game, really. Something for everyone, as Neil Hubbard says. And you're quite right. We, For the first time since Cheltenham Festival, we do have one race. It's the Persian War mm. uh, at Chepstow, a race which has thrown up. with well, Time Hill won it last year, didn't he? For P- yeah, Philip Hobbs. Went on to very nearly win the He's Albert Park. He's got a runner in it today, fresh off of the bumpers um, scene. Her yeah. debut. Even Song, is that right? Something Evergreen like that. or something like that. Or Evergreen or whatever. So, we'll yeah. get that. Don't <laughs> worry. We're all professional here, of course. Let yeah. us know that you're out there. We love your feedback throughout the afternoon. Hashtag mm. RP Live. Whether you're watching on YouTube, like the stream. Let us know you're out there. Get your comments in. We'll give you a shout if they're reputable of course good to have our regular contributors always with us what a day we have and of course on facebook live good to see you let us know you're out there so uh 135 coming up now this is the first race that we're going to get to we were on a slightly earlier than we thought when we were looking at this program last week we thought right nice 130 start happy days 20 minutes talk about the first at newmarket or york no because logician and the rescheduled cumberland lodge is here tricky race now it, it, Ordinarily, they wouldn't be saving this race, Graham, would they? But this is one of these years where you're going to get your chance to play. And we're up at York now. Yeah, one, one of these years. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. That's certainly uh, been a, a strange one, hasn't it, Dave? Uh, yeah, I mean, if we can't get the winner of this first race, then there ain't much hope for us, is there? Because uh, hmm. what well, a logician should win this one, shouldn't he? So he's going to be well, about, what, one to five? Well, let's go to Neil. Should we get the market up? Let's get straight into the action. Yeah, he's a little bit bigger than that, Graham. He's 1.29, so about, you know, threes on, a little bit shorter than that, two to seven-ish, Logician. Highland Chief mm. next, 6.2. Desert ah. Encounter, 26. And you can Glen, 29. So, so um, if, yeah. if you're new to the show, Neil, we will be getting up the exchange. That actually happens to be Neil's laptop, believe it or not. And Neil will be doing his trading. Have we chosen a charity for this week? Uh, we haven't, but we're open to suggestions. Racing welfare, I don't know. We're normally yeah. racing welfare, retraining of retired horse injured jockeys. R O R. Yeah, we've been doing rather well. Neil's got a rather good strike rate. If you don't know about that, so Neil will be putting on his selections. There is protocol on this show, and then myself and Graham will be weighing in as well. And if you've got any shouts out there, let us know. Get them in now. I've got any big lays today. Let us know. Is Logician a lay? Shall we get back to Logician? I am actually taking him on, mad as I might be. Mm. The ground worries me. And second run back. Let's face it, this is a horse that went big time on the sidelines, isn't it? Uh, I mean, he was absolutely nowhere. Forgotten about horse last year. St. Ledger winner, of course. He did win at the track. The Great Voltager winner, so York's not a problem. Last week, though, when this race was supposed to be run at Ascot and, and on pretty bad ground... A few shrewdies were lining up to take him on. He's never run on ground anything like this, Graham, has he? No. I always thought he looked to me the sort of horse who would act on it. A grinder. I thought he looked, yeah, fairly sort of... I, I sort of always hesitate to say this. But he's not a speed 
mile and a half horse. He's a sort of slow mile and a half mm. horse. Now, obviously, he's not slow compared to other horses, but he's not a real turn of foot sort of horse, is he? He's a grinding, staying type. The sort of horse who I think will be really well suited uh, by cutting the ground. So I, I couldn't have cutting the ground against him. And in many ways, the fact that this race has gone to York and not um, Ascot is in his favour because yeah. one of his best performances mm. last season came when he what, absolutely bolted up in that race at York last year. So I, I, I think he's bomb-proof, Dave. I, I can't see any reason to be taking on Logician. Well, I like Highland Chief against him. It may be the obvious one, but Ollie Cole uh, and Paul Cole, they love this chap. And I, I don't know, he, he was second in the Great Voltage last time, and he does love this ground, Neil Hubbard. Yeah, he's... Um... Yeah, he ran really well at Royal Ascot, didn't he, in one of those handicaps. And when Oliver Cole was on this show, I think, I forget what day he was on, but it was before the Grand Prix de Paris, which um, Highland Chief ran fifth in. I think it was did. September Stakes when Enable was back. That's right. And um, you just sort of got the impression that Oliver Cole was pretty sweet on this horse prior to the Grand Prix de Paris. Now, he came out and ran fifth, which on the face of it you think perhaps isn't that bad a run. But those in front, of, so so Mogul won that race. The horses who were second and third were in Swoop and Gold Trip. Both hit the frame in the arc Both last Sunday. The, yeah, and I just got the impression that the way that Oliver Cole was talking pre Grand Prix de Paris, they expect him to be a little bit better than that fifth place as well. So, look, this is probably a harder task probably than that Grand Prix de Paris against Logician. Um, he gets six pound pull with him, wait for age, um, yeah. which perhaps brings him a little bit closer. I, don't know. I, I, um, I just think, listen, yeah. around about five to one, I think this is worth a shot. Desert Encounter is the third favourite. Uh, Harry Bentley on. Small field, likely Cat and Mouse, not sure about him. Globe Trotter, isn't he? Fantastic Globe Trotter he's been. And you can Glenn for Jim Goldie, uh, who of course won the old Borough Cup. He's, he, he might be the pace angle in the race. He certainly tried to take it on uh, when he lost to a Dave last time at air. So, look, this is what we do here if you're new to Racing Post Live. We talk about the races, we give our selections, we see the trading, and we will give you the calls through the races as well. Fantastic reactions as we go along. We know you like that as well. We'll digress along the way a little bit, I suppose. We were chatting before you came on, in, into the studio. Has your form been that bad that you've had to take up boxing? Is that why? I mean, <laughs> Grand Robway has taken up boxing. <laughs> yeah, what, what, unlike, let us know about this. Yeah, unlikely as it seems. Yeah, I've 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 been um, I've been getting into some boxing around near my local boxing gym, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean to, to see me lining up uh, uh, along the, the mirrors they've got on the boxing. gym. What would we be? Would yeah. we be like? I mean, super heavyweight doesn't even really cover, uh, cover it, does it? I mean. Uh, you wouldn't believe how slow I look compared to some of these lads. <laughs> Have that, you done it before? Or is this your first time? No, I've it? been about. I'd been once before the lockdown, and then this is my second time. But really, pretty much the first one. And you see, before the lockdown, there was a complete change of ownership of the gym as right, well, and they've okay. done right. the whole thing up. Great place it is, um, but um, oh, I mean, yeah, it's hard work for someone as big as me, and. And it just you do not realise how quick some of these lads are. Like they're they're just getting their punches away, and you're just still sort of throwing half a jab, and they've got four punches away. They're so good. Right. Okay. So it, it, you can tell you can tell exactly how how his tipping's been going. He's had to throw away the iPhone. He's had to go in the gym and bust it out. But <laughs> actually, the form's not been too bad, has it? You've you've had some decent hits along the way, haven't you? No. Yeah. The form's been okay. Um, yeah. I mean, tipping wise, probably not so good in the last couple of weeks, but. It tends to be like that, I, you know. I'm afraid. I know that, that all, all, all every punt that wants a tip through is just consistent, just grinds out wins the whole time. Yeah. But it doesn't work like that for some reason or the other. You tend to go through really, really hot periods where you know you win loads and loads and loads, and then really, really cold periods where you lose loads and loads. And there's not really a hell of a lot in between. And it's about how you deal with those losing runs as to whether you're going to end the year in profit or not. Yeah. Every tip that goes through those barren spells, even the best out there. But when you're winning, can you make those winnings uh, pay and then hold on through those losing periods? Turnover, isn't it, yeah. rather than yeah. constant Do you have profit? like certain times of the year that you prefer? to put, like, is it, like now when we're getting into sort of the end of the flat season, the ground sort of changed from oh. what you would normally um, like consider like normal flat racing ground, if you will, and then the jumps are coming back. Do you find this period 
like an easy period or a minefield if you ask me yeah Yeah. I thought that I'll be honest with you I don't know what you thought out there let us know how did you find the arc it was a trippy weekend wasn't it first the news of Oshie Murphy and then all of a sudden the fee contamination the O'Brien family all pulled their horses oh my goodness gracious me Betfair on on Saturday night must have been crazy the carnage with the markets yeah and there was plenty of um, text messages and whatnot flying around trying to understand what's going on madness Um, yeah loads and then immediately when all these horses come out it's then a case of, right, have the markets reacted quick enough to those that have been left in the race? Yeah. Or is there an angle in there? Like, what's It's all those other things. Of It's not just a case of, say, like, horse X has come out of the race, OK, everything shortens. It's like, if he was a natural pace angle in the race, it's like, right, so what happens to the race now? It changes the whole complexion of it. And so it's not simply as black and white as, oh, this horse is a non-runner, everything shortens. It changes the whole dynamics of what's going on. Yeah, and they're curveballs that you just can't sort of legislate for the him. golden rule that we always say in racing don't chase your losses responsible gambling is something we push all the time quite rightly so there's nothing worse than 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 having a, a nap say in the four o'clock and starting your punting at midday mm. and then that nap goes in and basically you're just recouping your losses yeah, 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 up yeah. to there it is about choosing your targets wise isn't it so we'll be giving selections in every single race however you don't have to play in every single race enjoy it we'll give you an alternative light-hearted take on it as well we're gonna have some fun today quite rightly so as well future champions day at Newmarket. the crescendo of course, being the Phillies mile, but we'll be taking you on to the 410, the old Rolly Cup mile four. Have you ever seen a more competitive three-year-old mile four handicap? I mean, that's a ridiculous way to finish off, isn't it? We've been talking about this this morning in the office. My Lord. But it's I'm... double depends on it. Yeah, th- well, it does. That, is, that, is, that is confidence so you've got, for you. So you've got the first leg is a 20-runner handicap at York. And then the second leg is a 17 runner old early. That cap, tells so. you a lot about my punting, that does. You know, <laughs> just make sort of like you deserve I like. a bonus on top of it. Just, just for quickly, chaps, that I've been told in my it, 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 the heavens have opened at York. It's arrived. Thunderous scenes there. So the time of the first race uh, at York, uh, I think uh, I think this is right. Uh, Rob Lee in the studio has given me a couple of times. Is it York? I think slow by 3.63 seconds. They've just had a nursery there. It didn't actually look that bad to me. That was a five furlong nursery as well. A five furlong nursery. So, look, you're talking about sort of softish ground there, but if if the rain continues, how do you feel about that, chaps? When it when you're going into a softish ground, do you think when does the rain affect it? You know, when does it really get into it? Because at York, they say, don't you, over jumps, Foss Lass is like, you know, it's on its own with heavy ground. (laughs) But the like the Somme, uh, there's, was it Anthony McCoy famously said, there's soft and there's Foss Lass soft, or there's heavy and there's Foss Lass heavy. There's York heavy, isn't there? Or, or, or maybe not heavy, as we found out earlier on. But there's soft ground at York is, it is tricky, isn't it? The wheels can spin a bit. Yeah, it's um, well, it's Navesmire, isn't it? So it's, uh, it's a bit of a quagmire. <laughs> yeah, but, the uh, quagmire, yeah. Yeah, no. The weird thing was, we were running out some stats, weren't we? What, earlier on, in the sprint races at York, and we were trying to find some on heavy ground in the last 12 years, and I couldn't find one. <laughs> that was uh, that was 17 runner-plus handicaps yeah. at York on heavy ground. Not sing- not one single 17-runner handicap at York over five Does that say long. as much about William Darby, the clerk of the course, though, does about anything else? Well, yeah, uh, yeah. When was the last time they had actual heavy ground at York? Look out there, let us know. It seems it's an extraordinary A reluctance to say that they've got heavy ground there, and of course, let's not even talk about watering throughout the summer, but... As Paul Keeley said, if you're watching any premium content and in your papers this week, he previewed Air yesterday and uh, he, he, he did Exeter as well. And, and Air was nearly heavy. And he said, "How it's amazing, these, these, these jump tracks that couldn't possibly go through the summer or be on the flat because it was good to firm yesterday, still despite the fact they had 44 mils, hmm. which makes you think how much water are they putting on these flat tracks. You know, Ascot abandoned last Saturday. Unheard of, really, at this time of year. It's always soft there, but abandoned? Come on, mm. that's ridiculous, isn't it? So I know that we've seen some crazy rainfall, but um, listen, we will monitor the ground at York. We're expecting it to be pretty testing as it goes on. Will that be for Logician or won't it? Uh, he's a big player, isn't it? We'll, we'll talk about what we will do with Logician after the upcoming Cumberland Lodge, which is around about five minutes away now. But the heavens have opened there. At Ascot, uh, at Newmarket, sorry, Ascot on the brain, slow boy 5.66, I believe. Uh, the first race there. We've had two maidens, Phillies maidens there. Stalls on the far side this time. And um, I think prominent racing basically has looked like uh, where you want to be in the first couple, but that, that's the way in maidens, isn't it, a little bit? Oh, and it's often the way at Newmarket. I've been trying actually to, to run out stats recently about Newmarket in general, and are there certain meetings at Newmarket where the front runners 
just seemed to dominate. There was certainly one, remember early in the year, uh, around about uh, just after the restart, there was a couple of meetings at Newmarket, mm. and there, yeah. virtually everything won from the front. And then when they're on the rail, on that yeah. near side rail. When it's rail. on the stand side, which the stalls are tomorrow on Dewhurst Day, uh, on good ground, the rail's huge, absolutely massive. In fact, I love that opening meeting usually in April. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, on the rolling mile because the bookmakers seem to forget about it. It's still in, Ch mm. in, in Cheltenham and Air, you know, Scottish National Mode and, 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 and Aintree and that sort of thing. Whatever gets on the rail is up there and wins. It's a bit different on the soft ground and it's up to the jockeys where they go, isn't it? But it hasn't, it just, like I said, we'll watch any trends for you. That's what you get here on Racing Post Live, real time analysis. We can react as it goes. We'll be giving you all the views and the news on exactly what we think about the races. But I don't know, there's some fantastic races at Newmarket this next two days. I think that a little bit of rain overnight, they're expecting four or five mil now, which has come out of nowhere. It just keeps the ground nice and even. We don't want that tacky-ish ground. No, thing. it's never that bad at Newmarket, Dave, is it? They always say, um, a lot of trainers always say, the best ground is uh, in Europe is in Newmarket. And there's a simple reason for that. There's two courses there, so they don't mm. have to run on both courses all season. They can switch between the July course and, of course, it's a wide old track as well at yeah. Newmarket, so they can vary where they, they put the stalls, where, where they race, which side. Now, I think that's one of the reasons why we were saying about the draw. Over a period of time, it tends to even itself out. There doesn't tend to be a whole lot in the draw when you look at Newmarket statistics over a period, long period of time. It just tends to be every now and again from meeting to meeting. The odd meetings tend to be favouring certain sides of the track, certain tactics. So it'd be interesting to see this afternoon, for example, get a few races under our belt, yeah. where they're going to race, which draws are going to be suited, and is it going to be a front-runner's paradise again, or are they going to be coming from off here? Yeah, certainly in the first two races, you don't want to be getting too far back. But like we say, there were two-year-old maidens, they were fillies, so the next race will certainly be all telling there. So they're just going down to the start, we can see here in the studio for the Cumberland Lodge at York, would you believe it? We've got a social comment. Let's have a look, who's the first off the board? Let's get it in. Mark Smith, good to have you, Mark, along. The only thing that beats logician is the ground, I think. So listen, great question, Mark. What price do I, I mean, come on, this is one for the for the Ackers, I suppose, isn't it? And actually, what reminds me, let's get MyRacing.com off the ground. They've gone for a treble. They've stuck logician in to try and boost it. A bit greedy there. McFabulous mm -hmm. in the 3.15, the Persian War that we'll be covering. Another odds on shot. And they've gone for Pretty Gorgeous in the Phillies Mile. Great to have the guys at my racing alongside us. They've been doing really well with these hackers. Pretty gorgeous. I, I, I think that's fairly solid treble, to be honest. Maybe it is one of those days, isn't it, to just home in on the very solid ones and try and nick a bit there. That's the wind treble there for those of you that want to react. It always amazes me, like when you do these short price wind doubles and trebles, it always amazes me how many times one just, just, mm. just gets you. But when they all come in, it looks great, doesn't it? You do a nice little short price treble, you get three or four winners, they all win like they should at long odds on, and you think, yeah, this game's easy. Yeah. But the amount of times that just one of them just... Is it your type of bet, though, Graham? Not really. No, not really. I, I'm not really a multiple punter. I tend to get involved in these huge runner handicaps at big <laughs> prices, single bets, really. I'm not a multiple punter. But I did ask someone, because when we, when we do the, the live tips, though, it was similar to this, really. You get some emails in and... You know, I always said, well, why, why is everyone so um, obsessed with having a multiple? All oh, everyone was lucky 15s and, and Canadians. And uh, Can you give us yeah. a multiple? And uh, one of the big reasons, and I get this for punters, is they're saying, well, we all want a big win for a small stake. Yeah. That's what they, they want. They buy the dream, right? You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they want that idea that maybe we might get three or four good price winners and maybe win, what, 10 grand for There's 10 There's always quid. one that's going to let you down, though, isn't there? It absolutely yeah. does happen a lot. They're going into the stalls then. For the Cumberland Lodge, uh, we'll, we'll have a chat about this, guys, as we're going through the race about what we're expecting. It's drifted from the a little bit, logician. No play then for us here, Neil. We're just not, yeah, not for me. He's, he's actually drifted a little bit. He's out to one point three four now, so he is just bigger than threes on Highland Chief um, six Desert Encounters into nineteen. You can Glen twenty five. So logician just a little bit weak. Okay, and they're off and running then for the first race here on Racing Post Live today. It is one thirty five. The Cumberland Lodge and logician straight to the front. No cat and mouse then, please, says Martin Harley. Been riding quite a lot for John Gosden, Martin Harley. This is an opportunity he may well take. And you can Glenn, as we, think, as we thought the outsider might be up there. In fact, Lou, you can Glenn just got a slight difference of opinion about the ground. Highland Chief, tracking logician. So a little bit keen logician, isn't he? And Desert Act Counter, as expected, under Harry Bentley takes it. Now, you can Glenn's gone clear. And uh, Neil, has the market reacted in any way, what shape whatsoever? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he's into 16s. So Logician's pretty solid. Like, um, Logician Highland Chief doesn't count pretty much as you were, but you can Glenn is coming to 18s. I was just, just actually going to say, it's probably not um, quite a big day for Martin Harley in terms of getting a ride like this. I'm not saying he's going to keep the ride or anything when Frankie's back, but obviously Frankie is um, 
um, self-isolating, having been over in Paris for the Arc. Yeah. Um, but it's quite a nice um, spare ride to pick up for Martin Hardy, yeah, not isn't bad, it? is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean... He's had a couple of short ones beaten, actually, hasn't he? I think it's something at, at, at Ascot last Friday that all the punters were going crazy about. So this is a big one. Graham, uh, everything just as, as expected thus no, he's far? He's a little bit keen, isn't he, uh, logician? Uh, he's gonna go, is he going to go up and take it up now? Oh, he's going to put some pressure on Yukon Glen anyway at the front because Yukon Glen just getting a bit of an easy there. Yeah. And uh, obviously Martin Hardy doesn't want this race to turn into a... A test of speed. You can, mm. Glenn has got plenty of speed. I've been finished, what, fifth in the John Smith's Cup this year over a mile and a quarter. Yes, Logicians indeed. Logicians really the staying horse in the race, like we've already said, a real grinding staying type. So Martin Hardy doesn't want to let him get that easy lead because he doesn't want to be sprinting at the end. He wants this to become a bit of a test so that Logician's stamina can come into it. Well, he's up on his quarters now as they turn for home then in the Cumberland Lodge and the Highland Chief just relegated to the back marker. Harry Bentley on Desert Encounter, one horse that does like a cat and mouse and does have a turn of foot. He's in there. What does Yukon Glen find then? What does Logician find? They're starting to race now. Highland Chief just being shaken up. Uh, Neil Hubbard, what's the market saying? Long odds on, I imagine. Well, no, he's actually out to bigger than evens now. Whoa! Logician. And Yukon Glen is the one who's favourite at the minute. Here comes Desert Encounter. He loves this sort of race. Logician's not looking good. Doesn't like looks, enjoying this ground whatsoever. Now he's digging deep. Desert Yukon Encounter Glen. Cruising. So Highland Chief looks in trouble. Not gone today at all for the Coles. On the Ooh. stand side, which is doing something wrong here with Logician, guys. Martin Harley's lost his reins or something like that. It's all over. If you laid Logician, go collect because two going clear here. Will Yukon Glen get caught? Desert Encounter's trying his hardest. But Yukon Glen, the old Borough Cup winner, he just keeps going. Will Desert Encounter get there? Doesn't look like that's the case. Take a bow, Jim Goldie. He's finally got his group race. Good old Yukon Glen goes in. Two come well clear, Desert Encounter. Of a disappointing high and chief of what on earth Graham Robway went on with Logician yeah I mean that was a horrible horrible run from Logician was he come through to to well I thought was going to win it and then suddenly just had gone out like a light and, and the way he carried his head of the last couple of furlongs I just wonder if he if he was feeling something there I think if you were laying Logician, I, I, I took him on with Highland Chief, who's run pretty deplorably, actually. I thought he would he would be the one to pick up the pieces. If you were laying uh, the threes on just before the off, you're thinking, well, it's second run back, whether you believe in the bounce factor or not, and the ground he'd never been on before. Mm. Neil Hubbard, when did the market start sensing this shocking defeat? Yeah, well, when, when, he saw, when they turned for home and he, and he got the rail, but when Martin Harley went to push the button, there wasn't really much of a response there at all. It was really noticeable that he was really weak just before the off. Now, I don't know whether you could say the performance... You know, because he's run, like Martin Harley's looking down there as if there's a problem or something. So I'm not sure if you can necessarily link the pre-race drift with his performance as such, because that was just deplorably bad, like there was a problem. But the winner, mm. you can Glenn, hit a high of 100 in running. Does it counter the runner up a low of um, even money? And the Logician hit fives on in running, because I guess when they were turning for home... He looked comfortable, Yeah, as he? Graham sort of said, he was, he was in the right position. Martin Harley was sort of aware of the fact that it didn't want it to turn into a sprint. So he was sort of, I don't know, sort of like inching him up closer to the pace. The market reacted and was like, yeah, we like this. But then when the button um, had to be pressed, there wasn't anything there. But... Do you think the reason that he's not hit shorter than evens there doesn't count? Got a bit of a reputation, hasn't yeah, he, the has. horse? Yeah. yeah, he does travel really well. He's gone <laughs> through the race. Probably about furlong out, he's travelling all over the winning. You think that he's definitely going to win, but... In running punters, they know their horses. They would know that Desert Encounter is not always finding yeah. as much as you think he's going to win. Once, once he really has to get stuck into Desert Encounter, and you can Glenn is staying on. It's it only one winner. It was interesting. There actually, it is. If, the results that, on screen. You can Glenn. That if you Happy were watching, days. if you were looking at the market, actually, Desert Encounter was always trading at say his double figure price, roughly, and then he collapsed to sort of like around even money, a little bit bigger. So he made that big move, but then he didn't. But then he never went any shorter. So it's <laughs> the almost perils like, of in running. So it's punting. almost like the in running punters are like, well, we can't be any bigger than like. Like, he can't be double figures because it's a two-horse race. But he never went any shorter because, as you say, they sort of know what it's going to be like. But there was a massive collapse and then a sort of, well, so as you were. If of. you're Martin Harley now and you're coming back in, you're thinking, oh, what am I going to say here? This, I'm going to have to blame the ground here. He's had this, this association with John Gosden is something that it is, it is hopefully going to bear fruit for Martin. Of course, had a spell in Hong Kong, had a spell in Australia. Big, big race rider over his comeback. He's been riding for Alan King. It's been going OK. He's had three rides for Gosden. Uh, one was called Fundamental at Salisbury. That was four to six on, beaten three quarters of a length. He's had Golden Rules, was the horse I alluded to at Ascot, 
who probably was given a bit too much to do, six to four, five, and now a threes on shot logician as well. I think that was too Ooh. bad to be like. I wouldn't blame you. Wouldn't blame. Mark no, of course Harley not. That, of course not. You, yeah, of course not. None of us. You know. Yeah. You know. Um, I don't know. Yves Saint Laurent wouldn't have gone and won on that, would he? You know yeah. what I mean? So it's just not, a quirky sort a of throw up, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Listen. Okay. So look. We've had one race, drama already here on Race Bows Live. Were you with Logician? Did you try and get him sunk? A lot of the Trudies in the Cumberland Lodge, as it was supposed to be run at Ascot last week, were trying to take him on with the likes of Miranda and that. You can, Glenn, did you take a chance on the old boy? Let us know. RP Live is the hashtag. Get him in. YouTube, like the stream, let us know below. Uh, Mark Smith, our one contributor so far. The ground. I think it beat Logician. Let's move on. Let's go to HQ for the first time today. It is the Cornwallis Stakes, the two-year-olds over five furlongs. Pretty open races. Let's see if we can get the market up on the screen. And Neil Hubbard can take us through it. Yeah, so Method is your favourite at the minute at 3.3, which is around 9 to 4 in fractional terms. Acclam Express, the progressive Acclam Express, 7.6. Bahrain Pride, 8.2. And then you've got first edition at 11.5. Um, so, yeah, Method, 3.3. Um, Perhaps expected him to be a little bit shorter than this, considering he ran in the middle park, um, what, last week, two weeks ago. A much better race than this. A total excuse for his no-show there, the saddle slips and stuff. But he went off 100 to 30 that day, and yeah. he's 9 to 4 now. And you'd say that that middle park is a way better race than this. Now, soft ground, five furlongs. They're the unknowns. But purely on sort of ability, I'd have expected him to be... That 15 to 8 I quoted, I'd have expected him to be more that sort of price than what he is now. Is this the Hubbard play? I think it is, yeah. No, he wasn't going to be, because I was looking at horses like Bahrain Pride, first edition, perhaps trying to overthink it a little bit, but a lot of it was based around the price of method. But he's out to 9 to 4 now. I think, that, I think that's a perfectly fair price for a horse that's definitely the class act in it, if he can replicate that form over five furlongs and soft ground. And let's get it on, shall we? So yeah. we can give everyone a chance to react. Let's see what we can get. So what, what, what are we looking around about 5 to 2 e price now? Yeah, it's 3.55. So yeah, it's around 5 to 2. It's had bigger. So we'll just add that to the bet slip. So we're placing a back bet, which is, which, which is back in method to win. So we'll add that to the bet slip. And we'll have 25 quid on him at 3.55 here. So what that means is we're now green on method for £63 and red on all the other runners. Purely based on value. Like we always talk about betting and how, you know, it, it, it's a price game and you don't want to be chasing prices and all this sort of thing. I think this is a classic example whereby method wasn't exactly my first choice for the race, but everything has a price. And I think we're getting a pretty decent uh, bet here about a horse who really is the class act in here. OK, so down from a group one. Do you want to put some meat on that bone? Well, the interesting thing, I think, with Method is, like Neil says, I would agree, and I was expecting him to be slightly shorter than two to one. Now, I'm going to make a, a, a suggestion here, in that I think he might well shorten back up to less than two to one before the off, because he's that sort of horse. He's got that sexy profile. He's trained by Martin Mead, who's a trainer who really knows the time of day with this sort of horse, and he rates Method highly. I think the market will give us an indication of how well Method is going to run here. I think if Method's going to win, they'll come for him really, really okay. strongly. And I think you'll see him go off shorter than three. I think if, he, if, if, he, if, if maybe he's not, not that well fancied and he drifts back up four, then maybe he's gone past the price where you say, oh, he's now a good price. Yeah. And maybe the alarm bells are then starting to ring and you're saying, well, is he getting like too big to the point where it just looks wrong and maybe he's not... There's not that much confidence behind it. something him. looks too good to be true, it normally is. Tight. Exactly. <laughs> it's difficult Tight because round. as a punter, you're trying to weigh, weigh that up. But you've got to say, yeah, I mean, Method at 3.55, I would agree with you. Look, to me, that looks a big price. I would be saying less than 2 to 1. And I think his right price is around about 2 to 1, maybe slightly less like you say, Neil. But if he gets out to maybe 4 or 5 or gets to ridiculous big, yeah. you start to think... Well, yeah, yeah. It's all something right there. else here that we're not aware yeah. of necessarily. Yeah. I'm going to pour some cold water on the method argument. I'm against him. I like Aklam yeah. Express. I think he's got the best speed figure in the race that I could find. That was his penultimate win, which has worked out really, really well. That was at York. We beat Queen of Rio, Nomadic Empire, Mamba Wamba, Ben McDewey, horses like that. Um, Nomadic Empire has also got that soft ground form. He reopposes. I like an experienced horse in this race. I always have done. And I don't like horses that have an afterthought. I've never liked afterthoughts. Enable next week coming back to Ascot. It's an afterthought. Will I be against her? I definitely will be, I have to say. If she goes uh, for the filly and mare, if Magical turns up, I'm more than happy to bet uh, Magical mm. to get the better of her. So I just don't like 
backing afterthoughts. And for, this is obviously, if he had have gone to plan, for example, in the middle part, even if he'd have placed, they wouldn't be running here. He's a May mask, they've got no problems with the stiff five furlongs. Ground, something of an unknown. So while I agree that he could well be the best of these, probably is going forward, today I don't like him. Hmm. You're I, not having that at all, are you? No, because... I'll grin about you when I'm saying yeah, because that. Because I just, I just think, like, as punters, we can overthink it a little bit. And I think that when you're a trainer, yeah, of course there are some trainers who they have these targets for their horses. But generally speaking, I mean, I, I think I could do a fairly good job of it myself. I mean, I just think, <laughs> I just think it's just. Well, the I was a logician, Greg. <laughs> I, I just think it's just the case. That, uh, obviously, I've never trained horses in my life, but but to my eye, when I go down there, it don't seem to be a heck of a lot of science about it. I mean, you just run the horse yeah. up a hill a few times, you get them fit, keep you them get well. them rolling, keep them well, get healthy. them in, keep them healthy. And and to me, I mean, yeah, this idea that oh, he's an absolute master trainer and he's he's teed it up absolutely hundred percent for this race. Yeah. A lot of the time, it's just like oh well, you know, we've got to get this horse as well as we can get him. We'll get him as good a shape so he's not feeling anything. This we'll is- feel him up but I don't really believe in all this brilliance about trainership it's just like the, the, the hardest thing to do as a trainer right is to place your horse as well that's the hardest part so it's not really for me about oh well he's, he, had, he had him fully wound up for the middle park and now is he going to be right for Cornwallis I just think this horse would have been right the whole time right so I mean this has been this has been a liberating year hasn't it first you're boxing now you're considering taking out a trainer's license what next what next I don't want to know what next I don't want to know what next your wife and kids certainly don't want to be listening to this don't worry he's not going to start training he's going to keep tipping alright so it's all about method for you and the re- if he bombs out then you're perfectly if you think we're going to see the real method today that's it Keep it simple. Uh, well, I hope we are. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope we are because I think that he's a different grade to this yeah. lot if he is at his best. Shall we mention some of the others in the race? Winter Power. I mean, we're talking about, look, we, we've got a bit of a mixed bag in here, as you'll probably know if you're looking at your official ratings. Winter Power is a horse that Tim Easterby has thought a great deal of. Sylvester D'Souza drawn in one, so out, on the outside wing that is today, away from the rail. But that will be a pace angle, I think, in the race, and Tim Easterby has won this before. Uh, so, if you're at Clam Express, which I am, I'm hoping that Ryan Moore and Nigel Tinkler, Nigel Tinkler has a great year with his two-year-olds, I think that experience will really stand well to him. I think that probably, you'll be, I'm hoping that he'll be tracking him. What about some other horses, Neil Hubbard, that are moving in the market? Bahrain Pride, good run in the Mill Reef last time. Yeah, I quite liked him. So, he was the one who, like, if you sort of, I don't know, not, like, when I was looking at it and Method was the strong favourite, then Bahrain Pride was the one that, I was half interested in. He was a 300 grand breeze up by, so he's obviously like plenty of speed. He's two from two on softish ground, both over six furlongs. So he's back to five furlongs. Based, based on the fact he's a breeze up horse, you wouldn't think that, that necessarily dropping back to five furlongs is going to be that much of a bother to him. The way he won the second of those at Ripon, he travelled like an absolute tank through that. Um, he did hold a, mil, uh, a middle park entry, so the fact they're choosing to come here, they're taking yeah. a bit of the easier thing. But then, if you fancy Bahrain Pride, as you said, wasn't a bad run in the Mill Reef. But then um, the horse who finished in front of him that day, first edition, he's also Clyde there. Cox, and he yeah. knows a thing or two about these two-year-olds with supremacy. Then I think if you fancy Bahrain Pride, and that's what sort of got me a little bit, not cold feet on Bahrain Pride as such, but if, I, but if you're going to fancy Bahrain Pride, then you have to fancy first edition as well. Right. Um, so, okay. yeah, but I can give them both a squeak for sure. All right, so uh, we're thinking that he's a sort of stalky horse. James Dore likes him a lot. They'll be on the far side near the rail. Fast edition, I was there. A Tarlis Bay. How much do they pay for a Tarlis Bay? <laughs> this is the, this is the Andre as, as any Marco Botti horse that won at Windsor and has not looked back since. 800 guineas they paid for this. And he's now what? He's rated, he's three from four, he's now rated 88. Take a bow, whoever snapped that one up. He's a likely pace angle as well. Does that bring in a horse which has been extremely topical in this office, I have to say, called Burning Cash, <laughs> who, who Dan Walsh, one of our producers in the gallery, thought was possibly the most unlucky loser he'd ever seen at Doncaster last time. There was, was a bit of money Childers. for him and now he's just drifted back out, but there was a bit of, there was a bit of cash. Kevin Stott there. takes the ride. He's installed two, so he'll be hoping to latch on to Winter Power and maybe Royal Addresser William Agus and Tom Marcond. There's loads of pace in this race. I don't know, can we see him trading low and running at some point? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he like as, as I said, there was a bit of money for him just when we started talking about it and he was into sort of like 16s maybe. He's drifted back out to 25s, but there was definitely some support behind him early doors. Um... Yeah, as you say, he's a likely pace angle. Just going back to the top of the market briefly, Method actually hit 4.1 and he's come back in now, but he's still trading at around the 11 to 4 mark at the yeah. minute. So what's, what's going out in the market? Because I've noticed my Atclam Express, since I've tipped that to the world, it's gone 
all the way out. Yeah, well, Bahrain Pride is the one that's being backed a little bit. He's into 11 to 2 now, so he was probably around 8 to 1 ish when we started talking about this. Mm. So, yeah, he's into 11 to 2. Um, generally, Method is just, I suppose you'd just say he's weak at the top of the market. Now, they're not letting him get any bigger than 3 to yeah. 1. But the, that's where he's sort of settled down around that eleven to four, three to one mark. But every time he sort of just goes above three to one, he comes right back mm. in again. So. They are going into the stalls, talking about coming back in. So good luck wherever you're playing in the 2020 Cornwall Estates is 150 at Newmarket coming up. Let's get those socials in. We've had one so far. Let's get them out. We'd love to give you a read. How's your day framed up to be? Have you got any naps? Let's get them in. We'll get the panels naps. A reminder of that going on. Mine comes up in the 205 at York, so not long to give you that one. They're going in. Last couple going in. Uh, we're expecting them, guys, pace-wise. Like I say, Winter Power to be up there. Atalis Bay, he likes it. At Clam Express, Ryan Moore expect them to be up there as well. If you're on a holdy holdy like Method, are we expecting Method to maybe stalk, Graham? Yeah, yeah, I'm expecting him to come from off here. There should be plenty of pace on. That'll suit him. Okay, then. Last one goes in. I think we're just waiting for burning cash. Looks like they're Big all in. Big drift nice on Method settled. just before the race. He's out to 7-2 to two now. And the horse in stall eight. That's Atalis Bay. Always putting Ooh. his head over the stalls there. A little bit of drama. Then these two-year-olds just getting a little bit agitated. But they are off and running. And away we go. Has anyone absolutely missed it? Burning cash. A little bit sluggish away. Winter power then on the far side. Nomadic Empire. He's up there as well for Team O'Mara. William Buick on. Looking for Method, guys. Just buried in the middle pack at the moment. Bahrain Pride. Keen James Doll taking a solo down the middle. Neil Hubbard. Yeah, Bahrain, uh, Bahrain Pride is the clear favourite now, three to one. Um, although, although Method isn't far behind him, but Bahrain Pride, yeah, clear favourite. Mm, at Climb Express, not at the races today, absolutely gone already, he looks to be. They have gone pretty hard though, so where are we going now? Bahrain Pride not handling oh. the track at all, going all over the place. I guess you'd be happy now with Graham Robway on Method. Yeah, although it's a bit of trouble, he's going to have to weave his way through a tight gap. Oh, Burning Cash is coming as well. Could he possibly do the unthinkable and pay off everyone? Oh, here we come up the line. Winter Power keeps going, doesn't he? Sylvester D'Souza didn't like it. It's going to be caught. Burning Cash looks like he's going to run on for second. Method, not today. The drop back from five has caught him. He'll just get second on the line. But this is all about mm -hmm. Winter Power. Sylvester D'Souza kept it simple. We said would it be front runners paradise. Looks like that's the way. Three races so far at Newmarket. One here for you on RP Live. Front runners, far side. You're not going to go too far wrong. Neil Hubbard, tell us about the story of that Cornwallis. Yeah, well, Winter Power was a high of 23, but that was pre-race, so his price only really went one way. He probably hit about 16s in running, but, um, you know, his starting price was around 11. So, yeah, it was a little bit bigger in running, but not massively because he was always up there. I think to do with method, yeah, the drop back to five furlongs just just didn't work really. Like he hasn't run a bad race, but just when they were sort of coming out the dip, he perhaps just lacked that change of gear a little bit. And then he stayed on, if you will, over five furlongs. Is that so, exactly what happened there, Graham? Yeah, he's been done, hasn't he, by the, the, the shorter distance. He, he just didn't have the raw pace that the winner's yeah. got. I mean, take nothing away from Method, really. He, if you take the winner out of the race, then he's won. Yeah, I know. He wouldn't have won impressively. I've got a feeling this is going to be an expensive project, this. You're making excuses already <laughs> for him. You're, t you're saying take nothing away from him. I will be going back in next time. Well, I would be over six, but he's just got done by a horse with more pace. Well, the problem yeah. is, Graham, with a horse like this now that Martin Mead's got and connects, he's rated 106. You, you, you're going to, what, you know, the options are, unless they want to go on the all weather, options are becoming limited, aren't they? What six furlong races are you going to get into? Is he good enough to go to Breeders' Cup, Martin? Me might be. Is that way for next year? Yeah, but for then you're going to have. Or something. Is he a common worker? Come on, I don't know. Is he a group one horse? Is he a group one horse? Oh, I'm going to say no. Well, I mean, on that he's not. But on what we've seen before, he might be. The other burning question: Are you still considering taking out a training license? <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> let's hope it's jumps if you're going to well, <laughs> let's hope it's so far we're two, let's hope it's trotting two short price favourites to get beaten one at one to three and the next one at eleven to four so, oh yeah. the big bear that is Graham Robway telling it how it is and uh, yeah third time lucky you'll be opening it at York coming up next so look that was the Cornwallis speedsters all the way winter power my goodness me, Art Power Connections. Of course, Tim Easterby has had a great second half of the season. 10 to 1. Were you on? SDS keeping it simple. Method, probably a lot of you on each way, I'd imagine, at that price. And in the place market as well. That sneaky 11 to 4. And burning cash. There's a big one in him, Dan Walsh, isn't there? 20 to 1 as well. We're off and running at Newmarket. Fantastic scenes. Don't forget to give your comments in. Hashtag. RP Live with the Betfair Exchange. Get them in. We love to hear it, whether you're watching on YouTube or 
Facebook Live. Welcome. Hello, Dave Orton, Graham Robway, and Neil Hubbard with you today for the rest of the way. Here until the 410, the old Rolly Cup as well. We've got the Phillies Mar along the way. That's 335 burning up there. Who's going to win that? Let us know. We'll give you a shout, and the guys will give you their ideas about that as well. Should we move back up to the Knavesmire? Now, the guys in the, my ear were telling me that it was absolutely bucketing down there. When we were watching a logician get sunk there, it was absolute sunshine. I don't know what they're talking about. It's, <laughs> the, the ground looks absolutely all right to me. We have got a wide, wide open 2i5 handicap coming up, and I've got a nap coming up in this. But before we do that, let's go to Neil Hubbard. He can give you the shape of the market. Yeah, this is a cracking handicap. This is 20-odd runners, I think. So Chance is your market leader at 8, which is 7-1 to one in fractional terms. Shalir next at 10s. Uzo, 12.5. Crownthorpe, who won this last year, 14.5. Hesselwood, 15.5. Alternative Fat, 14s, and a whole bunch of them in and around that price as well. So um, a race where your market leader is 7-1 to one tells you plenty about how competitive this is. And where is Neil Hubbard coming down with <laughs> well, his play? I was going through, when I was going through this race on Thursday, I was saying before we came on air, you're going through it in race card order, and you're going through it, number one, number two, number three, all the way through. And then I hit number 12, which is where chance is, and I was like, well, he'll win. And then you sort of lose all your enthusiasm <laughs> for going through the rest of it. Yeah. And then Graham sent in his tip just then. I saw that he'd tip one that was race card number 14. I was like, Christ, I didn't even look at him. I need to go back and have a look at it. <laughs> But I've already pinned my colours to the mast of chance. Um, he is market leader. He is the one in here that we don't know as much about necessarily. I know Bar um, Baronial Pride you could probably throw into that mix as well. Um, this is a race for sort of season handicappers. You know what their sort of levels are. If they're running below their last winning mark, you know that you know, they've got a squeak. Chance is the complete own none. Um, yeah. And like the form of his last run is working out really, really well. Isn't it? Yeah, the winner that he finished behind has gone on and absolutely sluiced up at Ascot. The third has then come out and been placed in the Cambridgeshire. Look, at sometimes we were just saying you can overthink it. Like, this is keeping it really simple. He's totally unexposed. We don't know necessarily about the ground. That's the worry, I think. Yeah, but I mean, we're not back in a 11 to 4 shot here or 3 to 1 shot. You know, we're back in at 7 to 1 here. That's a, in a normal yeah. race with that sort of favourite, you'd be saying, well, I'll back him each way. The fact that he's favourite shouldn't really matter. He's a 7 to 1 shot. So I'm quite happy to back him both win and place in here. What place markets have we got available on the exchange then? Yeah, so you've got the normal place, which is four places in this instance. Then you've got five places and you've got six places. So, I mean, like six places is 1.87, 1.86 yeah. um, to finish in the first six. He's finish, got a better chance than that, Neil. Yeah, I mean, to finish in the top five is even money or a little bit bigger than even money, 11 to 10. So, I mean, I'm quite happy to back him in the win market, have a saver on the five places. And so if he just finishes in the five places, you're hopefully going to like come out of this with no loss. So that's how I think I'll play that, um, how I'll play the race. OK, I like chance as well. That is nap time for me. Uh, just like you, Neil, looked at this at the 48-hour decks and just thought, right, if the handicapper had his chance again after a week, he would definitely be giving him more, more on his back than just the pound he's given him. But what I like about him, his last run at York as well, he was a winner. He is a really good travelling horse, this. He's perfect for the Naysmire, I think. Take a stalking you know, position and then pounce. And Simon and Ed Chrisford, what a year they've been having, Graham Robway, haven't they? Their strike oh. rates are fantastic. Yeah, incredible. What a start for... Um, it's funny for you see all the stats now on Racing Post website. If you pull up Simon and Ed Chrisford, obviously they don't include all of Simon Chrisford on his own. <laughs> so <laughs> they're just well, one year to yeah. go at. But it's an amazing year. It's probably like the best ever year from a first season trainer ever. Of course, I always fall for it as well when you see the one on Racing Post next to him and go, oh, who was he trained by before? Yeah. And then you click into it and you go, all oh, right, yeah, just Simon <laughs> Chrisford. And then you come back out of it. It catches me out every time. Of yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you do have a chance to check out your replays where they're just ambling around the paddock at the moment, around about five minutes away from the next race at York. Get on your members section. Have a look back at Chance's run last time behind Rarek, who came out last weekend, last Friday at Ascot, absolutely hosed up. Looks like he might go and win the big uh, Balmoral Handicap on Champions Day, the final race of the weekend next weekend on Champions Day. Uh, the race wasn't run to suit whatsoever. It was a comeback run. He's coming back towards the finish. Probably wouldn't have beaten the winner, but... There's a lot, lot to like there. If he goes on the ground, I think he's an absolute good thing. Jack Mitchell as well, having a really good end to the flat season. His stats have... He's impressed me, Jack, I have to say. He's won me over for sure. Um, so, look, lots to like there. However, we have another one that members club viewers should be looking back on because if you go back to Newcastle earlier in the year you'll do, you'll do better to find a more eye-catching couple of performances than Baronial Pride put up your selection Graham Wobway Yeah certainly the last two runs from Baronial Pride have been uh, yeah, knock your eye out eye-catching uh, two runs ago the, the biggest eye-catcher I've seen all year possibly yeah. 
when finishing fourth at Newcastle, and then last time out staying on through the middle of the pack. Now, of course, the problem you've got uh, with Baronial Pride, you haven't run since those runs, and that was, what, Feb, January, February, before the lockdown, you've got a long, long absence to come off of. But the first run, the big knockout eye-catcher run, was after a long layoff. He has got form on turf. He does act on soft ground. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, is of course, that um, his best form is over seven. This is a mile. So, and I always think York mile <laughs> takes a bit of getting because they mm. get racing nice and early there. Yeah. He's going to have to He's travel. He's often ridden to get the seven at Newcastle, mm. which is a stiff finish, isn't He's it? going to have to travel into yeah. this race. Okay. But if he can, I think he's got a big chance. Now, the, the problem for me when with horses like Chance or whatever, as a punter sometimes, you just have to, you know, you have to pick your poison a little bit. You used to have mm. to say, I'm going to get beaten here sometimes. Pick and how, your poison? Well, how do I mind not getting beaten? You know, I mean, you, you ne as a punter, you're never going to pick every single winner. And mm. when you get beat, when you're on the loser, you have to sit there and say, can I be happy saying that that horse has beaten me? Now, if I back Baronial Pride, for example, who's a horse that's got good figures, but maybe he hasn't got the improvement of a chance in him, and I get beaten by chance, then as a punter, I'm happy to pick my poison and say, well, I'm, I'll accept that because I can see how chance has beaten me. He, he, you mm -hmm. know, he's the improver in the race, uh, and, and he's, he, he, he needed to find something to beat me. I think Chance has got, has got to improve to beat Baronial Pride on figures. I mean, on, on racing post ratings, Chance needs to improve to beat Baronial Pride. Now, if you're backing Chance you, at, at, what, four to one, you're backing him on the assumption that you think he can improve enough because he is likely racing on exposed. I don't mind getting beaten by that sort of horse, but the horse, sort of horse that I don't like getting beaten by is a Baronial Pride. <laughs> now, I don't like getting beaten by a horse that has already got the big figures, has already shown it. Now, for me, Bar Baronial Pride has already got the best figures in the race. Mm -hmm. Chance has got to improve to beat him, yet Baronial Pride is four times the price of Chance. Now, if I back Chance to then improve, and he gets beat by Baronial Pride, that is a head-in-hands moment. You are allowed to back more, more than one horse in a race. You, oh, you're aware of that. I hate doing that, don't you? Don't you like, just like picking your poison, which doesn't sound enticing at all, I have to say. <laughs> Most punters hate that, don't they? Well, Get in touch. Let us know. If you hate tipsters doing doing two two tips in a race, most punters hate that. Well, Tom Segal's, he's put up a couple in the same races. He likes to do it. Uh, look, And Neil Hubbard, in this in this race, we could do that at the prices. Should we get the bet on? That's the most important thing. Me and you are chance all the way. Don't listen to Brony or Pride. He'll be on lucky in running again. <laughs> this is all about chance. I think it's quite interesting though what Graham says about chance because like this, this is the type of race which I actually quite like betting into but chance is normally the type of horse that I wouldn't necessarily side with because he's the sexy unexposed one and in many ways he makes the market for the more exposed ones in here, your crown thoughts, your Uzos or something, those sorts of horses. But sometimes, so he's not and it's sort of something that I've been aware of myself in my betting and it's something that I've tried to sort of eat myself out of doing. Um, but sometimes I think you can just accept it for what it is. His last run was really quite good. I'm not backing him at three to one or something in here. I'm getting. A, a, a Sounds like you could price. be falling into this no, trap here. No, 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 he's no, trying no, to no, talk no, himself a, out not, of it. No, I'm not. <laughs> We're going to back chance here. So he's actually been back. So he's been back since we spoke about it. But he's into eleven to two now. So what we're going to do, we're going to have uh, £20 on him to win. They're going in, Neil, so get it rapidly yeah. on, my friend. And then we'll head across to the uh, five places market where he's hopefully just, yeah, even money, and we'll have the £30 on him to be placed. So hopefully, as long as he finishes in the first five, we'll cut a small profit, um, if nothing else. But Baronial Pride just um, heads up for Graham Selection. 14.5, a little bit of a nibble for him. I have there. to say, I had completely forgotten about uh, Baronial Pride. And just a little aside before we go to some social comments, which we're delighted to see are coming in thick and fast now. I started doing comments in running for the post, and that was I think that was one of the first races I did. And I, I got really excited by putting the eye catcher label mm. on him. Just I backed him next time, sixteen to one. You didn't think he was off at that price. It was a horror vision again. So I have had to back two in the race, and he has the big bear has taught me. I know you don't like tipping more than one in a race, but do you bet more than one in a race or not? Very rarely, yeah. uh, very very rarely, unless uh, unless there's just a horse at a massive price that I cannot see win because it will just kill me if I see it win. Because <laughs> you like need to pick your poison. Yeah, because maybe every now and again I back that horse. It's all about price though, as well, right? You could yeah. go through a race and you have it between. Two or three inside the minds of the big bear Robway and Neil Hubbard. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Horrible place to be. Well, that's where we're going. Let's see what the social comments are saying on the screen. Let's get them up. Okay, Gareth Evans. Welcome, Gareth. 
I am a one horse in a race, yeah, man. Okay, exactly. so you're with That's the Rodders. Okay, you're with the G. What else we got? Mark Smith back on Big Fails. Yeah. Big Fields always have to have a couple yeah, of darts boom. thrown. You're boom. with me. <laughs> Along the way, and Tom Segal. What else have we got on the screen? Jack Rogers. Welcome, Jack. Can Firmament find any of his old form to sneak into the placings at a price? Second in this last year of £2 higher. Firmament. We've yeah. spoken about this horse before. He loves York, doesn't he? Yeah, this, this is all that I've backed a few times because he's always well handicapped. You know? <laughs> Every time he, he runs. He's always well handicapped. I'll tell you what, this is going to be your poison. <laughs> oh, it could be. It's it? an in-running joke between me and a guy in work where it's like, oh, interesting Firmament. Um, claimer on board taking off five. Looks well handicapped now. Yeah, There's right. always a reason Every for time. it. Every time. He's a lovely, saying, lovely horse. Actually saying today is the classic sort of two Two cliff horses today, the Firmament and Arecibo double in the last. Oh, That's no. the classic oh, one. Arecibo. Arecibo. But Firmament, 42 on the exchange. You can certainly make a case for a, for, for throwing a few See quid if at I've that got price. Time well, there, there to... could be a bit of a back to lay angle there. Because yeah, he, he he's the sort of horse who trades at shorter price in running. Yeah, he always yeah. travels well, he's Firmament. £2 higher, isn't he, than his last winning mark as well. Astute viewer said there. And um, yeah, listen, six places on the on, on the on the place market, you're going to see him now. I'm looking at his York form for you out there. It reads really, really well. Basically, out of 10 runs, he's only missed the frame twice. That was last time, however, so are the wheels coming off? He is getting on a little bit. They are loading up, I'm delighted to tell you, for the 205. Good luck wherever you're playing. Great to have the socials in. Keep them coming. Myself, Dave Orton, Graham Rodway, Neil Hubbard from Betfair, here with you until around about quarter past four this afternoon. Unmissable stuff, isn't it? Real-time analysis, the reaction through the races. I'll be calling them. We're going to have a bit of fun with the commentaries, actually. I might ask both the chaps to take one. I'm not going to be unkind and give them this one. <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a nightmare. I'll do my best at this. They are in the gates. So here we go, the 205, competitive stuff. And they are away as anything absolutely walked out. Let's have a little look. No, we're all happy. They're just jockeying for position at the moment. As expected, Garden Oasis for the Easterby camp, bidding for a quick across the cars double. He takes them up. They're going the nice, fairish pace. Right out the back is Boardman. Looking for Firmament. Nice sort of sit at the moment. Exactly where you'd expect him to be. Looking for Chance. He's out the back. Alternative Fat, fancied by some. He's out the back. Uzo. What a, what a season he had last year. Still running well. Good evening, Nick one. Shalir's up there. Last year's winner. Crown Thorpe, he's right on the outside as well. Her jam in midfield. A little bit of jostling for position there for, uh, for, for Firmament. Neil Hubbard as they turn in. Yeah, Uzo is probably the one that the market likes the most, and you can sort of see why he's on that front end, isn't he? Yeah, chance is quite far back. Actually, Baronial Pride came into single figures, but I'm not sure if, they, if the market Where is perhaps he? misread who he was and the um, Shalir, because they're in fairly similar colours. Three furlongs but, yeah. out, and they're starting to trap Uzo and Garden Oasis, Nell Ray going clear. Graham Robway. Yeah, they're kicking off the front. I don't think they've gone that far. Here comes Chance. Yeah, Chance. Cruisy, nice. cruisy, come on! And where's Firmament? He's got a lovely chance as well, hasn't he? Absolutely. Come on, this is all about chance, isn't it? What's this getting onto his back in the yellow colours? Don't like the look of him. Two to chance, one chance. Just about takes it up. What price in the market now, Neil? Even money. Even Come on money. then, Chance. Get it up. This is nap time. It's Uzo going there. Can he see out the trip? On the fast ground, Uzo coming back for more. What a game performance this is. The two going clear. Is it going to be? Oh, Uzo's just getting the better of the argument at this point. Chance coming back for a little bit more. It's on the bob. I've got a bad feeling about this. All the way to the line. Oh, Uzo's done it. Finally got his day in the sun. Chance just got worried out of it. Carried over to the far side. Two dominated the finish. Before we go to Neil, Graham Robway, thoughts on that race? Yeah, I, I just don't think they've gone that hard, have they? Uzo was always well placed up front. And as Neil was saying, as they turned in, he was trading fairly short because he got the run of the race. For a second, I'll give you, it did look like your selection chance was just going to come through and worry him out of it. But he does stay, Uzo, and he showed it there. And he just carried him across the track, didn't he? Which, in in our rules, nothing will happen about this. But Kieran O'Neill, he's just been intimidated slightly, I'd say, Jack Mitchell. They've ended up right on the far side, having made their way. How's that? How do you feel about that? Guys, I mean, in France, they might have a good look at that. In America, they might have a good look at it. Very unlikely here. What is there? What? There's around about a long neck in it, isn't there? Something like three quarters of a length. Something, no, a quarter of a length, I think we could say that. He's tough and game, this chap, isn't he? He had a great season last season. He's come back. The two have pulled well clear, I have to say that. Has that cost chance? I don't think it has. Uh, I think that the he's had his chance, chance. He's coming through here and you think he's going to go and do it. Every and chance. He's had every chance. To be fair, like the, both jockeys have got their whips in their wrong hands, yeah. as all the jockeys always tell us. They're both sort of whipping the, with the right and left, sort of going into towards each other. I think it's a bit of uh, half a dozen of one and uh, six the other. Yes. Best horse won the race, Neil Hubbard? I think so, yeah. There was, I mean, it was quite interesting, actually, as we said. Like, when they turned for home, 
Uzo was always in front rank and Chance was probably second or third last. But when they straightened up, Chance made that big race move. And ultimately, he's had to spot him, what, like eight lengths, nine lengths yeah, yeah, in the has, run yeah. there. And he's been done on the notch. Do you think he's got there a bit soon, Jack Mitchell? Sooner than he, really? Oh, well, that's what you're like, alluding to. No, nah, not really. It's just that he's travelled really well into the race, hasn't he? And he's, he's, he's had to spot the winner perhaps eight, nine, ten lengths. He hasn't done anything wrong. He hit 1.1 in running. What did the market say? Yeah, let's... 1.1, is that how low we went? 1.11. Oh, Uzo hit a high of 40. Um, but he's run a really good race, Chance. I mean, they can't really have any... I mean, like, we had him in the place market, so we covered our bets, so that's fine. If you're Brian uh, Meehan with Ryek, yeah, uh, yeah. and you're thinking that's my form being boosted all over the place, yeah. Balmoral, which we will be covering here... Saturday the seventeenth. In fact, the third Champions is up there game. as well, isn't it? Because the third is that Shalir, isn't he? Shalir's and, run another honest yeah, race. He's so having a good. Sh- you can probably upgrade chance there the in terms of, as Graham was saying, like they perhaps haven't gone much of a gallop because the first and the third are up there throughout. So, so listen, and chance has come from miles. This back. is alluding to the fact that he probably, if, if if he could go back and take it back again, he might just make it to take his medicine a little bit. But if you're Jack Mitchell, you're thinking, well, they haven't gone that hard. I need to get there, and the horse is just really cast. He's the perfect it's your the- horse, which I think I tried to say before. Him. He's just a flat track, good traveller. Should be poised to pounce. The way he has quickened, actually, is very impressive. It's the classic thing, though, where if he sits a bit longer and he comes with a right rattle and he doesn't quite get there, we'd all be sat here going, oh, well, he should have made his move a little bit earlier. So, you know, you can't really... I think it's just one of those things. He's ran a cracker and he's just been touched off. It's just one of those What happened things. to Baronial Pride? Was There's it a, a Stewart's of... inquiry, though. Oh, um, Stewart's, Stewart's. And actually, it's a bit closer than you think. Uzo is actually 1.2 on the machine and Chance <laughs> is 5. Well, um, I don't know. I so mean... I don't Uzo's know. drifting 2 to 9 now. I think he it. just worried him out of it. That would be. I wouldn't have said there's anything if, wrong. If there. I was writing out, do you know so what? I'll be back in Uzo. Yeah, we're we're, we're well, going to get the, the, uh, the head on here, so we will yeah. get a better idea of. of Talk of us through it, G. To, to my eye, I, I, it didn't look that bad when, 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 when you're seeing it from the side on view. Mm. But what you're about a furlong out here, and, and I think this is when both uh, jockeys switch their whips uh, into opposite hands. Oh, he definitely comes, come, doesn't he? Yeah, he's going towards his left now, Uzo. There's no contact as yet. Uh, now they're oh, getting there really close there. together. Yeah, but Chance is leaning Come on, I'm looking well, for contact oh, here. Chance yeah. is leaning. No, I don't think there's enough there. There was a bump, wasn't there? Was there was one bump, but I think that uh, Chance, He's had his chance. Uh, chance has had his chance. And also, uh, they both came together. It wasn't like uh, Uzo went across him. They, they came yeah, together. Jack Mitchell had his whip to bring him mm. across towards um, Uzo. I mean, like it's interesting. He's like 1.2. Guess what, um, guys? I've seen, an eye, I've seen an eye catcher in that race. Guess what it was? Um, Guess who it was? Well, the perennial right. eye catcher at oh, York. No, not Firmament. It was Firmament. Was it? He's coming back again at the finish. He's run another cracker, hasn't he? He's so one well done. On. He's one for the Balmoral then as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he probably will go there, won't he? Absolutely. Let's get the result on screen then. Provisional result on the screen. Uzo, look at those. How many have we got on screen? Stewart's Inquiry. Stewart's Inquiry. Uzo, the tough Uzo sees off chance. Shalir in third, good benchmark for the race. Young fire horse, I can never get right. Another horse of the Omaras. And Plant a Dream, who came into it in really good form as well. Strong race, I think. In anything that comes out in the next couple of weeks has got a good right to win on one well, of the Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the second is, is the best horse in the race, the way the race is, is because he has to make his move when, when everyone's quickening. But... Uh, this is the problem, right? If you want to get involved now, like I, I would generally say to you that 1.2, the stewards inquiry, I mean, that, that looks a good price on who's owed to keep the race. Problem is, you're dealing with the stewards, aren't you? I always say to myself, mm. right, this looks like a good bet, but I'm not dealing in the definite here. I'm dealing in the, what someone else thinks of the results. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, it's a steward's opinion, and now, you just don't know how they're going to see it. This is interesting. We'd love to hear your opinion out there. They brought in these professional stewards, didn't they? Because we, we, their punters and professionals alike were saying there's not enough interferences that are overturned. You know, the best horse often isn't winning in the races. So a big non-runner in the next, in the at Newmarket, uh, Nizuna is a non-runner. A gasp, a horse that we weren't sure if it wanted soft ground or not. We'll get to the Osho Sharp Stakes coming up Sorry, in around yeah. about 10 Sorry, minutes' time. There, a gasp apologies. from Neil Hubbard. I yeah. thought you were going to say Stewart's inquiry had been announced. Yeah. But they had, we had these professional stewards come in. And, you know, the Australian model, which they look at it, in Australia that would probably get chucked out, to be honest. Would it? Yeah, okay. absolutely. And, um, yeah, because it's a race-winning move and, and they are allowed to impart their personal opinion. And we've had these old stewards, haven't we? A lot of them came out in the army.
army, like the old majors. They've had a few drinks at lunch or whatever. Dad. You know, some of them, if, if, <laughs> if it's the last race, you won't even hear the clacks and go if something's, you know what I mean, gone over the rails. However, now we've got these more professional younger stewards coming in. We have seen a few cases, haven't we? And you're like, oh, I don't think ordinarily, if you've been in racing for, you know, as long as we are, that's not going to get chucked out. Hang on a minute, I've got to rewrite. Well, do you think that's what's affecting the price here? Because it does look like one of those where you just go, this is a slam dunk, but maybe things are changing. Now, maybe things are changing. The professional shows there. If you went in with us on chance, have we got every chance of having that overturn? Let us know. However, we must move on. That's the game here on Racing Post Live. Thick and fast for the next two days. We're with you. Stick with us. Unmissable stuff, isn't it? How are you enjoying the show so far? Do let us know. Myself, Dave Orton, Graham Robway from the Trading Post, and Neil Hubbard from Betfair as well. Shall we go to the Oso Sharp Stakes? It drew gasp from Neil Hubbard because the what? I think it was just about favourite, wasn't it? Nazuna. Was favourite. Yeah. Nizuna. Out comes Roger Varian's horse then, um, who's got some interesting form lines. Shame she's not in it really. I've got a feeling that means we're going to have a bit of a hot pot here. Neil. Uh, well, it's a two-horse race in the market now, actually. Saffron, Breach, uh, Saffron Beach is your favourite, 3.3. Thinking of You is uh, 3.95 is um, next. Mamba Wamba, 9. Uh, Thank You Next, 9.2. And it's double figures the rest. So, yes, yeah, Saffron Beach. You would think Saffron Beach and Thinking of You will probably go off closer to joint favourites than perhaps they are now. But, um, yeah, the once race Saffron Beach heads the market. And where is Neil Hubbard playing? Uh, I, I was playing Nazuna. Oh, that's <laughs> handy, I, Neil, I, isn't no, it? And I had actually backed her um, as well. So Okay, um, yeah. Uh, Paul Keeley was keen on that when I spoke to him this morning. Paul Keeley will be giving you tips tomorrow on tomorrow's show. In fact, I think we've got a couple this afternoon from Kiels as well, haven't we, coming our way? Stay tuned for them. Because I did actually fancy um, Isabella... Um, What's it, Isabella? Giles. Yeah, Isabella Giles. You're in the, the Phillies game away, Neil. Uh, in the <laughs> Phillies now. So it was like um, collated, um, collated form, really, isn't it? But um, yeah. without Nazuna now, um, yeah, I don't really know. Um, you, so, so that was your selection. All right, yeah, well, yeah. shall I take yeah, the floor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I do like Saffron Beach here. Uh, store one, so it's going to have the, store, the, the rail, which Winter Power had on the far side. We said that on the flank. Uh, if you watch back, it's made and went. You're looking at me. What are you? What are you giving me? You're giving me a stare, as if you're a. But you're already sharpening your argument, aren't you? To get you, you, right. I'll, I'll get it out of the way, and then we'll let the big bear have a go. Saffron Beach, Adam Kirby, Jane Chapel High. It'd be great to see Jane Chapel High, wouldn't it? Take out a group race with a two-year-old, and it, it really was impressive over course and distance. And it, it looked the real deal to me. It, uncomplicated, power through it. Adam Kirby, just the sort of filly he likes to get stuck into. Loving the draw from what I've seen so far. And the winner of the second race uh, there today was a, was a well-backed maiden winner. It was called, let me just remind myself, it was an Andrew boarding horse called Nebulosa. And it took out the second race pretty, pretty readily. Was beaten around about six lengths by this as well. So the substance of the form. This race used to go to a once race maiden or novice winner. I think this fits the bill. Go on then. <laughs> Take it away. I'm waiting. I don't like once race maiden winners for a start because I think often that they... They don't always build on that second time up. In fact, a lot of them can sometimes go backwards. It's so not that's, the sort of poison you pick. No, that's, a, that's not the poison that I want to be back in. Then, then another thing that goes through my mind is like, oh, you know, if I back a Jane Chapel, I am trained also to, to win a group three at, what, two to one, and it doesn't win. I don't know, I'm just not sure that that's... I, 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 nothing, nothing against Jane at all. You know, I, I'd love to see her do well and all that, but from a punting perspective... <laughs> we believe you. <laughs> from a punting perspective, it just it, it just rings bells, doesn't it? You go, oh, 9 to 4, 2 There's to an one. alarm bell ringing uh, for you. Group, well, I, I'm group the complete race, opposite of that. Me. I'm the complete opposite of that. Have we got any news on the stewards' inquiry? I, I'm assuming it's going to go the way that we expect it to. No Uso's news so far. shorter. Uso shorter is 1.11, which I don't really know why, because you're looking at the same information as you were five minutes ago. But What's the liquidity sh- now? Has the liquidity gone right up because of this it's, it's, Stewards inquiry yeah, at York in the yeah, 205 if you're just joining us. There's like hundreds of pounds available to be backed at all of the prices. In fact, you can lay Uzo at 1.13 for thousands. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Are the big players yeah. involved is what I'm well, getting uh, at. Yeah, I guess. Well, she, considering Uzo was as big as 1.2 and maybe a little bit bigger, the fact it's come back into 1.1 suggests, you know, that people have been, you know, based on what we've said, you know, if you just look at the evidence and base it upon what we think will happen, then you think he's going to keep the race. And so 1.2 people, you know, any price can be a value price, and people are obviously judging that. But now you're getting into the realms of, well, you don't know what they're thinking. You're trying <laughs> or to second guess. Or is this like, you, so. for want of a different, 
the expression, is, it like a, is this like a slow death for Pontus? We know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just Why are it. we prolonging this? Just give it to Uzo. <laughs> yeah. You know, is that what we should be doing? Let us know out there. Keep, keep comments coming in. We had some great socials, didn't we? We'll get the banter out. That's what we're having on this show. Already lots of fun this afternoon. We never know which way we're going to go on this show. We are dictated to by the reacting reactions as we go. So, look, we've got the Oso Sharp Stakes coming up. Uh, the last race at York, just to give you a, a, a variant on the times, it's definitely the rain's getting in. It's slowed by 5.08 seconds. They didn't go that fast, did they? But it is an older horse handicap, and we should be able to get a... It's so, proper soft ground, though, right? Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll get another, a better idea after another race. I think the, the big thing here, Dave, as we said already, and, and you know, we're here to sort of assess the races as we go live. And what we've seen at Newmarket so far, in the three or four races that have been run there so far... You want to be on the pace and you want to be drawn towards the far side. Step forward, Saffron Beach. <laughs> Step forward, Saffron Beach. I'm hoping that she goes into the trenches for me here. Uh, alternatives, Graham Robway, where did you see this go? Well, it's, it's like one of those things. Like, I mean, like Knight Neil, I was on the non runner, you know, but um, it's just like Jane Chapel, I'm at two to one, Aidan O'Brien at three to one. Even like Jane, you know, would probably say herself, you know, if you had to back one of her horses at twos or one of Aidan's at threes, you know, would you be, would you be playing that? Joseph's. Oh, is it Joseph? Yeah. Sorry, oh, Joseph. Oh, a blow, a blow. You had this to is going to happen there. to me a lot, you know. I was going to let that slide. But this hey. is going to happen to me. <laughs> this is going to happen a lot because there's another one, isn't there? Is it, uh, his other son's got race horses Donica. as well now. Yeah. And they've got... Uh, Funnily enough, Donica is training, Graham. Yeah. <laughs> And they all run in the... <laughs> He's just jealous that Donica's got a licence. They all run in the same colours, don't they? <laughs> yeah. When I get my licence... And Ryan Moore's on it. When Ryan I get Moore's my licence, maybe they'll send me some, some horses <laughs> well, as well. Of course, we've got, we're building license. up to the Phillies Mile. Yeah, That's a lovely so link there. Because yeah. Shale, now that Fancy Blue has been retired, of course... The uh, the French yeah. Oaks winner for Donica, that's a you know, and the Nassau winner, big blow for him really. For oh, I thought Aiden trained that one. Did Shall? you? Well, not Joseph, <laughs> <laughs> not Anne Marie. <laughs> no. Okay, no, indeed. Uh, so listen, Shale is the horse in the uh, Phillies Mile, of course, up against Pretty Gorgeous. It's two one, is it, at the moment to Shale? I think in this lovely rivalry we've got. So look. Donica, he does indeed train, funnily enough, and he's got a huge chance of taking out the Phillies Mall. Who are you on in the Phillies Mall? Let us know, YouTube or Facebook Live. Get them in, like, the, like it. Uh, hashtag RP Live for the Betfair Exchange. <laughs> I'm getting well, my words back. Then, Graham? Oh, you're on the non runner. Uh, I was on the non. Yeah, yeah. it's so, very handy. This isn't it. So I'm going to be sticking with Aiden or Joseph. It's actually Joseph. Or one of those, one of those O'Brien the ones, horse. the table <laughs> horse that you know. I thought this was one of the better lays of the day. I've got to be honest. What the the, the Aiden? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 the O'Brien the, horse. The, the O'Brien yeah. horse. Yeah, they're, well, they're all in the same colours <laughs> to give you a bit of credence there. It beat a horse called Culfa K. Uh, this is thinking of you, the second favourite, clear second favourite in the market. Limerick on soft ground. So come back to soft ground. And if you watch back, it's one at the car last time. It probably does want to get back on this soft ground. But Culfa K. It's just been, it's one of these perennial sort of hitting the barn door horses. And, and, and that was, I think Colfer K, that was over, it, it, it hasn't won since is what I'm trying to say. And I think it's probably just an 80 horse. So we gave it a racing post rating of 78. All of a sudden it jumped up behind Elysium in the well part stakes. Uh, and again, that does it. An old mead horse taking out a group three Phillies race. It doesn't strike of being sort of nearly classic form. I think Saffron Beach is just going to prove different class here. She looked a bit laboured to me thinking of you last time. I don't like the draw in stall eight. I think she's probably just a probably you, just got so in the lorry. Do you think she? she's a classic for me then? No, no saffron. Oh, well, Beach. saffron beach. No, well, let's talk about the previous winners of this race because Oso Sharp Stakes. It does. You remember when Miss France won it for Andre Farb? Yeah. Uh, that was in all the way back in 2013 now. That was the last, in fairness, that was the last nearly classic course. You've had Rose of Kildare, horse that had loads of runs for Mark Johnson, uh, took it out last year. Mo Juice, do you remember, for Roger Varian? Um, uh, it, back-to-back wins because at in order took it in Poets Vanity. There's not really any top notch as you're seeing in here. Saffron Beach, she's just a great... She's a top notcher. She's a group three, yeah, solid You heard three. it here. Dave Orton <laughs> says that Saffron Beach is a top notcher. Oh, uh, there we are. So listen, well... I, I don't. Uzo keeps the race, we're being told. Of course it does at York. So if you're on Uzo, which probably a lot of you were out there, congratulations. If you're on Chance, never mind. But we were in the place market. It was a good each way bet. And I think there's definitely a race in that before the season's end for the wonderful Chrisford team. Moving on then back. Is, it, is, is this just a two-horse burn-up? What about the likes of Sitaha, who, who ran at Royal Ascot, would look like 
quite a nice horse, but the wheels have come off the variant. What would have been the second string? Yeah, there's a bit of money for um, Sitara as well, but also for Mamba Wamba, and she's probably the talking horse in this in terms mm. of the market. So as high as double figure prices, Mamba Wamba is now into six, so it's into five to one, having probably been around the nine, ten to one mark um, just before, well, even, even after Nazuna um, came out. Yeah, she they was are that going high in. and um, has been really well supported, Mamba Wamba. Would you like to call this Grand Rob? Yeah, sure, let's do it. And if you would like to call Saffron Beach home in front, you will forever get on. <laughs> do, do, can, can I stop commentating if Saffron Beach comes, <laughs> comes to take it up? I might, I might override you at some point, <laughs> I don't know. But listen, I'm on Saffron Beach, whatever you're on, good luck. It is the Oso Sharp Stakes. And we break new ground here. The big bear himself, Graham Robway, is going to call them home. OK, so it looks like they're all in. And they're off. And that's Satahi, I think, has jumped out in front. Um, and uh, is that shine for you? No, sorry, that's quite assassin. It's a solid start. <laughs> it's a solid start. <laughs> quite assassin and uh, and Satahi and uh, the one in red. That's go. That's going. Go. Saffron well, Beach. Saffron Beach. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, should have known the white bridle. That's always a sign of the Jane Chapel Wyam horses, isn't it? But uh, yeah, quite assassin. What a couple of lengths ahead here, and got that favoured far side rail. You happy with the position of Saffron Beach? Very here, happy. Dave? Very happy. I think that thinking of you, Neil Hubbard. I'm sure the market will back up. Has also got a nice position. Yeah, thinking of you is just about favourite. Uh, ju uh, just edging Saffron Beach here, but pretty much joint favourites. Going to want to watch out here, Gray, isn't it? Uh, 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 Adam Kirby's going to need that run. Could they concertina? They're getting going. Yeah, it looks like Saffron Beach is just uh, eased off the rail here. Quite assassin's got that oh. favoured. Come on. Saffron Beach is travelling like a top notcher, just like Dave said she would. Saffron Beach going through this race she's really, really bridle. well. Now she's coming under pressure. Quite Assassin's on, keeping dig. on strongly from the front again. So here comes the Saffron Beach picking up really strong. Go shortly. on, Saffron. He's starting to find plenty here. Go on, the Kirby Shaladi's out. Going away. Saffron Come Beach. on, Saffron. Yeah, looking, looking at all, all, Come on, all we like got the this. top notcher. <laughs> Come on, Graham, you're all over this commentary. <laughs> oh, no, this is, this is getting worse this day. Saffron this Beach. Is top notch stuff. Pulling away. No, oh, coming late. There's a zone coming on the near side. Thank you, next. But Saffron Beach and thank Come you, next. Come on. Saffron Beach Yay. has done it for Dave Orton. Happy days. I think thank you, next. Uh, what a, a, the place is picked up by the Hannon team. Shine for you in third, which was a bit of an eye catcher there. Probably a smart cookie. Thinking of you, one of the ladies of the day has been sunk. That was probably, a, 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 I think, a lorry mate for... Uh, pretty gorgeous later on in the Phillies mile. What do we make of that race? What did the market make of that race? Neil Hubbard. Yeah, Saffron Beach didn't go any higher than three to one in running. Um, well, she was always up there, always travelling really well, wasn't she? So you can sort of understand that. Um, um, think of you, 2.86. Thank you, next, 2.6. Um, but yeah, Saffron Beach was um, always well positioned and her price only really shortened. Um, good performance, really. I know. I, I know the runner-up was coming uh, back at her late on, but um, for a once-raced maiden, it wasn't that bad a performance, really, oh, I'll tell you what, it? he's having an absolute shock. <laughs> no, I wasn't saying... This is great, isn't it? He's, uh, I'll tell you what, I can see why the, that, that, that boxing gym's going to get... That punch <laughs> oh, yeah, Jane Chappell, I haven't been down there. Give, give, give me a right hand or something. Oh, but, absolutely. Uh, I don't, yes, indeed. owners are sort of <laughs> like dwindling. So you don't have to phone up for any quotes <laughs> anytime soon, Greg. I won't be putting this out as my promo when I, when I take out my license. <laughs> Talking of promos, uh, I'll tell you what, I don't think that Ross Briley and Bruce Millington tomorrow got too much to worry about. Do you, Neil Hubbard? That was a, that was a call of calls, wasn't it? What did you make of Graham Robway's call out there? Did you have any idea what he was saying? <laughs> Thankfully, if you kept it simple, Saffron, that was a really nice performance, that, because, again, we're looking towards the far side. We're looking at prominent racers. She must have hit a high, though, Neil, because that, that, that flat spot... She looked a little bit in trouble. I love this filly, though, because she's green. She's got a lot of substance about her. And as I said before the race, when you watch back in the members' section, the replay, ever so important to do, of her maiden win, which now looks all the better that the third's host up on this card as well. She's just green, and she, Kirby's perfect for her, isn't he? The way he can just get these horses to respond. Yeah, it was a really nice ride. I, I say, like you always look at it in terms of where races and won and lost. And we looked at Chance, you know, in the last race about how much ground he had to make up mid-race. And Saffron Beach was just always in the right position there, really, and that was reflected in her in-running prize, where she never traded much higher than three to one, and she returned the nine to four favourite. So a really nice performance. Um, yeah, and she'll go on to bigger and better things, presumably. Yes, oh so sharp winner. So they'll put her away for the winter, you would imagine. Do you think she might? Well, listen, she's a filly, so I don't imagine that. Um, that you know, Jane Chapel, I'm uh, the Kiwi trainer. I don't. Um, I, don't imagine they'll travel with her, but they've got themselves a nice prospect here, haven't they? She goes on the easier ground, not Breeders a problem. Cup. They go Breeders' Cup with Ooh, her. Ooh, there's a shout, Neil Hubbard. 
I, think? Yeah. Oh, so sharp winners. So where will you go with South Front Beach? Were you with it? Mamba Wamba ran a nice race there, didn't it? Richard Hannon warming up for Chindit tomorrow in a 14-runner. You heard it, 14-runner Dewhurst Stakes. Chindit, hot favourite there. Do you like Etonian? Let us know. So much that we're going on about here, and I believe that you're reacting out there. What's going on? Let's have a look at some more social comments. Coming up on screen, Joe Holden. Good to have you, Joe Holden. <laughs> Stick to punting, G-Rod. <laughs> Stick to punting, G-Rod. Look at the emoji look for G-Rod. Mark Smith, ITV are coming for G-Rod. Absolutely happy days. He's destined for greatness. And Neil Francis, good to see you back on the show, Neil. Move over, Hoyles. There's a new kid on the block. Woo! I'll tell you what, Neil Hubbard, do you fancy a go? Do you fa- mm. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll some see. people just some people just rise to the to the occasion, don't they? And I have to say, Gerard, that was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> to be stuff. fair to Gerard, he, Never didn't actually, he didn't have either a laptop or a newspaper in front of him. So in terms of recognising the colours, it was a bit of a difficult job. And, and actually, we're just just while we're on this subject, I said to him before, I said, should we, should we mix up the commentaries a bit today? I mean, I'm, I'm still a little bit wholesome. I was a man flu last week. I'm, I'm, I'm all right now, guys, by the way, <laughs> just to let you know about that. Wait till we're locked in a room <laughs> I'm and a then drop that option. <laughs> I'm, a ta- I'm a ta- not, not the year to be doing that. I'm, I, I'm a tad horse still, so I was like, should we have a little play about? You, you don't shirk a challenge. That's what I've always loved about you. Uh, as a colleague, as a mate, uh, you know, you don't, and uh, yet you just had your, your app. No, I just got my app here, yeah. Schoolboy era. Yeah, yeah, I got <laughs> my app. When Enzo came in, right, uh, Tony Ennis, you know, a famous commentator, and uh, he came in, he had uh, like sheets of paper yeah. all, all set yeah. out. Highlighter yeah, pens. And everything like that, and here I am with my app. Which I tell you, and you can that, never tell the difference. No, it's always, <laughs> no that's not like one of those dreams, isn't it, that you have where you're like, you know what I mean, where you're like, you're, you're having a dream. I've got to commentate, and I'll be like, what have I got? I've got the app, and he's not the biggest iPhone I've ever seen in my life either. So I tell you what, next to, next show, I'm expecting proper preparation. I, what I, I did like. hear Neil just whisper in my ear though that I'm better than Bruce, so that's all that matters. Oh, <laughs> he'll be watching. He'll be watching. A phoning coming up. All right, so we're cooking with gas here on Racing Post Live. Are oh, you having? fun we definitely are great to have you on board myself dave orton graham rob way from the t- trading post not from the commentary box and neil hubbard out of his betfair cupboard let's move back to the knaves Marsh, shall we because we've got what probably is a trial for the e next year out the melrose handicap we've got some form there it's back up to the mile six the famous mile six on the knaves Mar. and uh, really competitive race this neil Favourite moon, just about favourite from Mr. William Haggis. Yeah, favourite moon is your favourite and is sort of shortening up a little bit. 4.1 in the minute, heads the market. Just ahead of Ispahan at 7.8, Strawberry Rock at 8, Zaband 8.8, actually Prince Alex 7.6, the market just needs a bit of reordering then, and double figures the rest. But yeah, favourite moon um, was 5 to 1-ish just before we came onto air and is now clipped into 4s on the exchange. Mm, so, f- yeah. 5 to 1, it, it, again, you were talking about a price thing with Method earlier. Mm. Uh, when I was tipping for this, I, I, I th- honestly thought favourite moon would be, is, you know, it's William Agus, absolutely hosed up last time. I thought it would be about a 9 to 4 shot. With five to one, those of you who took that out there, if I had my chance to tip again in this, I think around about five to one, there would only be one tip for me. However, he does have that York X against his name, Graham, and some horses, as we know, just don't take to the nose wire. Yeah, it's funny. I was writing a piece about this earlier, although be it all on the sprint track. But some horses seem to just love it and some hate it. And he was one of these ones, wasn't he, a couple of starts ago. Favourite for the Melrose, yeah. yeah. Bombed out there a little bit. Now, you can be a bit harsh on these horses. It might not have been the course. There could have been any any other reason why he didn't show his best form that day. But obviously, as a punter, you have to work on what you've got. And that's all you've got. So you go, well, that would just be a slight black mark against his name. But otherwise, he's got strong claims, hasn't he? Yeah, oh, very much so. And he's since come out back at Haydock, where he won the time before being subjectivist. Who's going to be a cup horse next year? I think they chucked the tongue tie on, didn't they, Neil? Say, yeah. So you would you 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 could probably read into that that his breathing or something wasn't quite right in That's the Melrose. That's retained, I should say. It's yeah, and he, and he keeps the tongue tie on. So they obviously looked at that Melrose. What went wrong? You maybe think that he might have made a noise, something like that. They've put the tongue tie on him. He retains the tongue tie now. He's shortening up. He's three point nine now, so he's getting a little bit shorter. And obviously, William Haggis chose to come here as opposed to the old Rowley Cup, which is where he was entered as well. So yeah. good shout, absolutely. Now I would imagine that's because they want to test the water with him because this does look very much like a sort of Ebor horse for next year, doesn't it? He does, and potentially into a cup horse as well, maybe for next yeah. year as well. So you've got plenty of races up at York, the Lonsdale Cup, and things like that um, to. Um, to farm over two miles, and if Stradivarius isn't around next year as well, all of a sudden that scene becomes a lot more oh, open, doesn't it? What about, yeah. what about Melbourne Cup too? I mean, obviously, William Haggis, yeah, yeah. 
been over to uh, Australia a couple of times last winter with a day. Hugely in, successful. Next, next year, maybe, Favourite Moon, Ebor, Melbourne Cup, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Young sort of Rascal combo. went down there as well, didn't he, mm, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, Neil, let's get these plays in there and the public will be paying for them. Well, my play in this was going to be to lay Favourite Moon because I was thinking he might be the sort of price that was what you said there, Dave, which he might be around the two-to-one sort of mark. And he's obviously a bit bigger than that now. So I've sort of... Everything's got its price, and that that also relates to backing as well as laying. And so he's perhaps just a little bit too big for me to lay here. You're, I think, you're chickening of out so of that. I'm maybe chickening out a bit. So in terms of betting for our chosen charity, happy to hear what you guys think, and we can perhaps play one of them because I've, I've I think it is fair to say that I'm fence sitting and got cold feet on this one. Well, and one man who knows not how to sit on a fence, <laughs> they always collapse under us, don't they? So, what, 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 where are we playing? Well, it, it, you know, it's got to change sometime today, the <laughs> luck, hasn't it? Because we haven't got a lot right today, so maybe this will be the race. Poor time, lucky. Now, what, do, you see, do you see the race last time out between uh, Isfahan and uh, Z-Band? Zealand. Uh, yes. First, now, yeah. now uh, to my eye, I thought that Z-Band was the best horse in that race. I, I know he didn't win it by far. They come well clear to rest. It was a short head, wasn't it? But the market seems to completely disagree with me because from the moment I looked at this race yesterday to even now, I think, uh, Isfahan is still preferred in the market to Z-Band. He's a maiden, isn't he, Isfahan? Yeah, even though Z-Band beat him. Now, I know that Z- Isfahan comes strongly down the outside, appeared to have the race won, and then Z-Band come back and beat him. But York is more of a galloping track, suit the stayer, um, I thought the Z-Band would confirm those places, even is, though the market disagrees with this me. This is a pretty tasty prize. You know, Ispahan could have gone for a, a, you know, a novice on your weather or something like that. Maybe his four-year-old in making for Dave Simcock. Sort of horse that Dave does so well, Nicola Curry on. It's 46 grand to the winner, this. Yeah. Um, so they obviously know that they've got a pretty well-handicapped horse. Perhaps it was Greenness at Thursk that beat him last time. I, again, this is a race, isn't it, where you could... Pick a couple. Is this behind the uh, the G way? Uh, Z band, yeah. Z band. And actually, on yeah. the market, Z band just after when when you started talking there, Graham, he he has nudged ahead of um, Ispahan now. So Z band eight point two, Ispahan nine. So yeah, and, okay. and, and, that's uh, probably a bit more of a reflection on what you were saying. Another yeah. point as well to make is that um, Roger Varian this season in these races, these right. sort of stay in tests. Mm. How good has he's has yeah. his record been this season? I did run out the figures a couple of weeks ago for a race at Ascot that I think he might have won. But I mean, virtually every one of these one mile six furlongs, big candy caps. Race? Was he's it won. Yeah, Shandoz has been won. Sorry, and, yeah. And, uh, he won the Ascot race yeah, in the Ebor, didn't he? Fujera, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. that was called, Fujera, Fujera Prince. Yeah. Well, there's a horse called Fujera Bridge, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I always get it mixed up, and obviously getting Joseph and Aiden mixed up oh, as well. And I, I, I just thought I'd throw Fujera out there <laughs> and let one of you put <laughs> you right. And the I, yeah, luckily, one of you two did. It's why we're here. I, I, I looked at this race and I, I thought that I could have chosen two or three. As I mentioned, favourite moon around about what I thought would be nine to four. He was a little bit too short for me. Uh, Eleven to four now. Yeah, I wouldn't put you off that. Prince Alex, uh, Wave Beckett won this race last year. He's just absolutely on a roll, isn't he? Into second favourite now, and six point six. And he won despite things not got quite going his way as he liked to ADOT last time. I just wondered whether this was a little bit too far for him. One that the market doesn't like is Strawberry Rock. That's who I came down on last time. Really impressive last time out at uh, Ripon. Hugo Palmer's got his horses firing again. They're really ripping, aren't they? So again, it's Strawberry Rock for me at a price. Yeah, there is one in here who, as you said, will go will end up over hurdles probably sooner rather than later. But that's punctuation. Oh, he's a of, national horse, this, isn't it? Yeah, he ran in the he ran in the Melrose and um, finished ahead of Favorite Moon that day. He just went off far too quick that day and sort of fell in a hole, which is understandable. But when you look at him and when you see how he runs, we talk about a knee action and what that means. He's got the most pronounced knee action in the world, which, nat- which normally means they're going to enjoy or perform better on soft ground. He's got his conditions again today. This is like a mini Melrose, but you'd say, whilst it's a really good race, you'd probably argue it's a little bit less than a Melrose, albeit a really good race. And um, he's going to probably be the pace angle in here. And under perhaps a little bit more of a restrained ride or a bit more of a considerate ride, he, he might be one in this sort of place market, something like that. Albeit, if he won it, you might be a little bit disappointed by some of those other horses this, that this, you've mentioned. This is a really interesting horses punctuation because I must have been one of about 200 that were at Kempton one night in February <laughs> yes, when he won. he absolutely owes that. Oh, no, my. I mean, you won't see a more impressive winner because he went to the front and he, he just, like that long galloping, yeah, yeah. big knee action stride, just took him clear. And I thought, this looks like a derby horse. And yeah. then it's not really panned out. The only thing I would say about mile and six furlongs at York, it's hard to make all around this track. Yeah. This is... This mile and six furlong track tends to suit hold-up horses. 
Yeah. Uh, the punctuation is going back to him. He, he, he will end up over jumps. I'm almost certain of that. Plenty uh, of money for him, abroad. actually. He's been a high of 25, 26s on the exchange, and he's into 11 now. He is so. one of those, I think, project horses, isn't he? They tried to get him ready. Price-wise, put him up today, He might well have done, Tom Segal. Good point. We'll get one of the boys to check that uh, for us. But every chance, there's just so much racing going on at the minute. You, you forget about that as they go into the gate. They tried to get him ready after Kempton for Royal Ascot. It's a raw runner, of course. And the ground was just wrong for him. I just think they've been picking their way with him ever since. And he was a little bit unlucky behind Favourite Moon when they met at Haydock. OK, really competitive race coming up. I'll take over the commentary mantle, shall I, for this one? Well, Jim? you don't want me to do this well, one. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure your app can handle it. As good as the app is, the G-Rod commentary is something it might, it might need to be reprogrammed for. But good luck wherever you are playing in this. Are you Favourite Moon or indeed are you going to take him on? We'll find out whether he likes York or not coming up because the flag has been raised. Although it looks a little bit ambitious, ambitious, ambitious from the flag man at this point because we've still got Grand Bazaar to go. And I think also we should mention for John Gosden, Martin Harley. This is a big ride for Martin Harley, isn't it? He's had a couple of, I think all the three rides he's had for John Gosden. This new association have sunk so far. Logician, what are your thoughts on Logician? Let us know here on the show. Would you give him another run this year or just put him away? Well, they were time to start. It surely would have been Breeders' Cup, I think, had he come through the Cumberland Lodge, which he didn't. How's your punting going, by the way? How are your lays going? Let us know. Hashtag RP Live. Get involved if you're on YouTube or Facebook Live. Indeed, good to have you with us. We know plenty of you are with us. Indeed, keep the socials coming. But for now, it is the 2.40 at your F. Finally, in you'll be delighted to know. And off they go. And this one, not the greatest away for Nicola Curran and Dave Simcock, but no doubt from that uh, bunch of connections, hold up was the plan. Who's going to make it? Is punctuation going to go to the front? Graham Rob by David Pro, but just taking a pull as Grand Bazaar goes on. Yeah, that doesn't, again, it doesn't look like they're going that fast, does it? You've got Grand Bazaar in front, but he's, he's pulling quite hard. Uh, I don't know what that is going up. That's Dancing side. Harry. This is Roger Charlton's horse, who yeah. did lead last time out. Angus Villiers, a £5 claimer, just gone to Tony Hyam, one of the super agents out there. He takes it up. Do you think that... Um, do you think that... Uh, punctuation is eventually going to take this up because to my eye they don't look to be going very fast at all now we've obviously said earlier that this track suits horses coming from behind but it won't suit horses mm. coming from behind if they don't go a pace up front There's which that is what we action. saw in the one mile handicap earlier of course absolutely yeah, yeah so okay who've we got here let's have a look then one horse i want to keep an eye on is toronto guys who i wrote about earlier on wanting a trip he's up to a mile six here james givens horse he's in about fourth at the minute they are ambling along aren't they all z lap z band took a bit of a full step there but he's all right he's back on prince alex as expected being held up along with favorite moon just looking for where strawberry rock is at the moment in mid pack and along then nice as you like after you after you Neil Hubbard what is the market saying pretty much as you were really I guess I mean what, what um, one of the key things to note is the sort of top four or five in the market are the ones who are sort of the the back four or five in the race at the minute so if that's not where you want to be then the market is going to be all over the place shortly because they're all anchored out the back they, they are, are stringing out yeah, a bit they're now, starting to they? turn on the taps now well we're seven furlongs out now and they do seem to be putting a bit of pace to this it's interesting though we were saying about punctuation going jumping punctuation putting a lovely jump across the road there about yeah, I missed it. after about two furlongs. So there's a bit of promise there. Are oh, you just ramping up the price for when, when he goes a, to the uh, sales? Try yeah, and this is public hurdle, school, 20, 20, <laughs> yeah. here we go. They're coming in then, chaps. Favourite Moon's going to enjoy this, isn't it? If you backed him last time at Haydock, you look beat. Still one by 12 lengths. But Danny Tuddock's going to need to get a pick up because now they're kicking slightly. Dancing Harry, just as they enter it on them. Where are they going to come? Will they go stand side again, which is what they did in our last race? Let's have a little look. Prince Alex, if you're on the Beckett runner, he's getting a hurry up now favorite moon gets the hurry up punctuation he's going really well dancing harry they're sprinting a lot of these are going to be caught out the ground neil hubbard a last look at the market yeah so favorite moon is out with the washing at the minute grand bazaar pretty short punctuation just about favorite Prince or dancing harry. Harry. harry come on see will he get a run there's lots of here comes he's got to have a say in this Ispahan not going to reverse that form i don't think at the minute ridiculous curry run into a bit of trouble strawberry rot's gone favorite moon laboring on the far come side come on z band dancing harry though takes come it on, up -Band. are we going to see a bit of intimidation here. Prince goes, Alex is absolutely on the bridle. Got oh, a feeling no. this what's is going to be second, G-Rod. What's that? Not second again. And what's this fighting it out as well? King's Charisma for David Come O'Mara. On, Not even giving this a mention. Three horses Come on, going clear. It's behind leaving it too late. Z-Band on, on the far side. Keep going. King's Charisma in the middle. Prince Alex, he Keep just going, knows how to win. Oh, Prince oh, Alex no, is going to do gonna it. Get it. He gets up. Prince Alex is going to do it. About second get there. again. Rafe Beckett wins the race for the second year in the running. We've got an e-ball runner next year. He just knows how to win this 
bloke, doesn't he? Wow, is that a five-time Anil Hubbard? How low did he go? Z-Band hit 1.4 in run-in. So pretty sure Prince Alex, a high of 34. And the one that we didn't actually mention in the lead-up to the race, King's Charisma hit a yes. low of 1.56 in Third run -in. Third to Prince Alex at Haydock last time. And uh, so that's the form that's come to it there. Um, I don't know. This is a. I don't know. Harry Bentley. He took a pull there, didn't he? Half a furlong out. I'm afraid I knew your fate at that point. <laughs> Quite interesting, though. Actually, in these two close finishes, the horses that have been as close to the rail are the ones who haven't, who, who have actually been touched off. I don't know if we're reading too much into it, but the, the winning horses have come a little bit more. I wouldn't say down the middle as such, but they've been off the rail as and opposed to. And then they've ended the up far side, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, but the ones on the far side, close to the rail, are the ones who have been beaten by the ones who are a little bit more out in the middle of the track. Mm. But. Um, well, a bit like Chance, like Ziband hasn't really done much wrong. He's sort of, um, where's he come from? Quite Well, he's sort of trapped through the winner, haven't they? So, in fact, the one, two, three are all in like the final, what, four or five there. So, um, Do you think now, finally, Andrew Balding will say, Nicky Henderson, I'll put him on the lorry, across Lambourne he goes, and we're going to see punctuation. punctuation. yeah, maybe, <laughs> Getting that maybe. stalling ground. I think that's good. He has got the biggest <laughs> knee action I've seen in the last 10 years, I think. That's unbelievable. So we're just picking up the replay and they're turning him around like three funnels out. A bit of sighing. Yeah, let's just talk about Favourite Moon at this point as well. Yeah, well, he sort of, he, he was, I was going to say in the wrong position, but I mean, the winner and the second and the third have all come from a similar position. Just it's, hates it's, York, It's another it? flop at York. I think that's all you can say. He was never, like, it, in running, he didn't go massively short, but he did touch sort of around 11 to 4. So he did shorten up in running, but yeah. it's just another disappointing run for those people who say, you know, York is a sort of horses for courses type track, and that's that, that's naught from two for that. And it's not naught from two like he's finished second or third. He's been out with a washing twice. It, it's one of the fairer tracks in the country because it's flat and it's a little bit galloping, long home straight. But, Graham Robway, it takes them a long time to get to the start, doesn't it? They've got to walk a long way, and the temperament, all right, we've got no crowds at the minute, but it can set some horses off. Some horses just don't like the experience that is the nose mark. Yeah, and you've also got that before the race, don't you, where sometimes they have to come across That's the, what I mean. the track. Yeah, it's, it's quite a... Um, you've been in the middle of that track. I know you have with yeah. your kids when the fairground. Yeah, you got a yeah. last meeting. Yeah, it was a, that was a good... Good day that was, yeah. But well, we um, saw it with Batash before getting wound, or oh, that's been attributed to mm, Batash blowing out absolutely. there before as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing Favorite Moon back for next year's Ebor, but uh, don't give up on him. Absolutely not. He was sort of coming back a bit towards the finish, and as we saw at Haydock last time, he, he, he knows how to win properly. William Haggis will give you know a, connections a plan for him, I would imagine. Uh, Ispahan, another one we ought to mention. Just got badly taken out of its ground and it's been beaten further by Z-Ban. Has Z-Ban improved that little bit or has this run just not raced to the, suit? The, the, the thing with Isban is he's run a very similar race to what he did at first without getting quite as close to Z-Ban. Like he, he just, again, looks like a work in progress when you see Isban. He just looks like he's still learning. Yeah. It was surprising, really, for all running over a mile and six. I know he's only had a few runs and... But he looks like the sort of horse who is going to really, really improve. Zeban just went through that race more professionally than him and travelled a lot better than him and probably has improved uh, a little bit more than him as well. But in the long term, in, in three, four, five runs time, you might be saying Ispahan might be the best of those. Yeah, and he's sort of, like to your point when you were previewing the race, Graham, in terms of like you thought the market was the wrong way around and you expected Zeban to confirm the form, etc., etc. He's definitely done that, but that's no slight on Ispahan, who's still very much a work in um, progress, isn't he? He's now he? five he's from five, race. Prince Alex, by the way, yeah. guys, in, in, in handicaps. That takes it, what, to five from eight now in his career. He went up just a four pounds, and the handicap is going to be saying, I'm not right. Now he's going to try and get his revenge. What do you do with a horse like this as a punter and indeed uh, with connections? If he's signed off now and he comes back in the spring, do you think that he is he are these one, 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 one horses? Is, is it because they've been on a roll? Would you take him on next time? You know what I mean? So you're what you're asking day? is, when I've got my license, what I would do with him? What would you, would you keep it simple? I'm imagining you would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, if it, if it was me and I and I was training him, you'd just be looking to, to pick up another handicap, you know, because he, what's he going to go up for that? Maybe six, seven, eight. I was going to say, what's he going to be ninety now? He's but, only eighty-one there. But you say keeping it simple, right? It, it, but these horses, he, he's had the two runs, hasn't he, to get himself cherry right? They've gone up in tripping handicap company. They've got the mark. How many times do we see these horses that have got these big sequences and then they just go missing, you know, mm. and in their four-year-old career? Because the handicap is kind of... They need to wind up into it. He's on a real roll. I'd be tempted just to keep going with him. Look, Keep looking for races. Well, yeah, but you don't really see so much that of sort of 
training like Rafe Beckett, you don't really see them drop off so much. They do tend to just progress, don't they? Um, the Australasian boys are going to be all over that, aren't they? They're going to be looking yeah, at him they, thinking, whoa, I've got one here. Well, that's it, what I was thinking. Like, if he does carry on progressing, though, what is it? Is he going to be like a Northumberland Plate type horse, something like that? Ebor horse? Was yeah. it Ebor horse? Um, I think the Ebor is the it's is the, the end goal. The yeah, but in, like before he gets there, maybe in the Northumberland Plate, something like that. I don't know if he's there got is any a, a very sort of divine path, isn't there, yeah. for these three-year-old stayers as as they get older. I mean, there are those races next season: Ebor, Northumberland Plate, Melbourne Cup, eventually, and then and then if you're good enough, there's a ways you can go into group class and the cup races. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you've got even if he is this sort of trip now, races like I know we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but 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 races like the Irish Saint Ledger and stuff like that that's open to older horses. And stuff, That's an interesting you know. shout. Look, yeah. he's a lovely horse. Were you with him on the five timer? Did you go with one of the guys? Did you go with me, Strawberry Rock? I, I, I blew out there. I'm hoping to get back on track at Newmarket in the next race because we've got to move on to the three o'clock, the challenge stakes here on RP Live. Let's hope you're enjoying the afternoon. We're having loads of fun as ever. We're dictated to by the racing, real time analysis and reaction. We've had plenty of it here today and we've got a real cracker coming up for you. Hashtag RP Live if you're on Twitter. Get your comments in if you're on YouTube. Get your likes in below. We love to read your feedback and indeed on Facebook Live. Hello, Dave Orton, Graham Robway and Neil Hubbard. If you're just joining us, we've got a cracker coming up at Newmarket. I really like one in this. I'll tell you why after Neil Hubbard gives us the uh, what I imagine is a competitive market, Neil. It is very competitive. A bit like the race, if you look at official ratings, there's not much between them on the official ratings and there's not a great deal between them in the market either. Calusi heads the market at 4.2, Happy Power 5.2. Glorious Journey, 6.4, and then we're into double figures. But, I mean, the double figures, you know, the biggest outsider here is Foxtrot Lady at 18. So we're not talking horses that are out, you know, 50, 60s. The outsider is basically a 16 to 1 shot, which uh, lets you know just how competitive this is again. So another race that's really competitive. Yeah, lots of pace on here I saw as well, Neil. Um, before we talk about the tactics and where myself and Graham are going, is there a Hubbard play? Uh, yeah, I quite like um, Happy Power in this. Um, He's actually been sh he's shortened up a little bit um, overnight. But, yeah, happy power. So um, he was pretty good as a three-year-old. I think sometimes when horses aren't winning lots of races, you naturally put them down as being no good. But he was fourth in a Sussex and sixth in a QE2. Yeah. You know, he's pretty. He's a pretty solid horse. It was that Sussex run as a three-year-old which made everyone think, OK, yeah, there's good, then, but, good races in this. But, I mean, like, and when we say sixth in a QE2, he was only beating six lengths in a group one. I mean, that's no bad run. If you look at his record on soft ground or worse, it reads third, first, first, first and sixth. So I think soft ground is absolutely ideal for him. Seven furlongs should be fine for him as well, or is fine for him as well. It was only a little small field group two he won last time on Good to Soft, but he still won. Um, that's two it was a Mickey Mouse race. Yeah, but he won. He won. That's two for, you know, he, he, he comes into this chase. to win it, Neil. Yeah, but he comes into this chasing the, hat, chasing the hat trick. Conditions are fine. We know he's a classy sort. Um, I'd be more confident that he'd run his race than Calusi would for a start. Ah, Put it that no, way. Indeed. Um, oh, yeah, I'll make you right there. And so 5.1 about Happy Power. I think that's I think that's fair. Time to trade? Yeah, so he's 5.1 in uh, decimal terms, so that's 4 to 1 in fractional terms. Um, we'll add that to the bet slip and we'll have £25 win on Happy Power um, to win this race. Okay, happy days. You've got your chance to react to Neil Hubbard's play then. Is it Happy Power for you or are we looking elsewhere? Graham Robway? I um, would be swayed a little bit here by what we've seen already. Yes. Because you've got to remember that we've been watching the racing all afternoon. You yeah. are allowed to do that. I know yeah. it's going to take a lot for you to swallow your pride and do it. Yeah, and what have we seen? We have it's seen... This is not you runners, keeping it simple, of course, is it? Paradise. <laughs> it is, yes. And you want to be drawn more towards the so far So low round. numbers. Now, I know this is not particularly a massive draw race, but even so... Horses do seem to be performing better when they're sort of one or two off that far rail. Yeah. And I made this a tools race between Neil's selection, Happy Power, and Glorious Journey. And Glorious Journey, for me, is going to get it yeah. on the draw. I was worried that we would agree at some point oh. during the afternoon. The you're in trouble. You're in trouble here, Dave, because um, I've got seconditis. But, yeah, it's Glorious Journey for me. Yeah. And uh, just all three should be ideal. Just a couple off that rail. That's been the place to be. He races prominently. He won't be right on the pace, but he'll be, he'll be there, which you've needed yeah. to be. But we saw the Jane Chapel Iron winner last time. Uh, race just behind the pace. Edge out, come and win. I think this this race will pan out well for Glorious Journey. And and if you're back in Calusi, I, I really think that you you 
you're, you're, you're not watching what you've seen already. I'm not saying Kalusi won't win, mm-hmm. but Kalusi's a real turn of football, so he will be coming from off the pace. And it hasn't looked easy to win from off the pace no. at Newmarket. And he was due to run at Red Car last week, is oh, another seven, afterthought. Seven, seven. He was due to go to the Red Car listed race up there, and then we not just the O'Brien, of course, who... Uh, team that pulled their horses last week because of the potential contamination of the feed. You know that big story out there. Rog Varian also did it as well. He's got Dyer in here as well, hasn't he? The returning Dyer, who of course got plenty of new market form as well. David Egan takes the ride on that. And this is an afterthought for me, Kalusi. It looked so good, didn't it, when it took apart that handicap at Royal Ascot. Goodwood was a bit of a Mickey Mouse race. But last time, was it a Haydock? He did disappoint me. Are you a glorious journey? I yeah. am. I was just saying, if you want to come back, so if we think it's pretty like Happy Power and Glorious Journey are potentially the two that this should set up for, then we could look to Dutch the pair of them. And I know we don't like to have two on us, but if you're looking at how this race might play out, it's almost the logical play to have both of them on side. So How do we do this, Neil? Uh, yeah, so I've got out the Happy Power bet, so in effect I've cancelled that. But here we are. So if we'll add Happy Power and Glorious Journey to our bet slip, there's a little box up here called Stake. If we hit that Stake box and we'll put in £50, and then what we'll do is split that £50 across both those two horses. So regardless of who wins, we'll win the same amount. So we'll place that bet. And so, yeah, we've got both Happy Power and Glorious Journey batting for us in this race. And if either of them win, we're pretty much going to win the same amount there. Lovely. I think they are the two solid ones. I agree. Just keep it simple. And I like what I've seen so far this afternoon for Glorious Journey. And your luck's going to change. <laughs> I was struggling to keep it getting here, but listen, your radar, how do you feel about this when you're a tipster or you're a punter? How do you feel about this out there? Let us know. We'll go to some socials in a second. When you're having seconditis, as you called it, you bang there. You, and, and even when your horse is coming fourth or fifth and you see a ride and you think tactically I might have done something different, do you feel, right, I've just got to persevere with this? Or you, you know, do you need to go out for a, a quick fresh air walk and clear your head? Or do you know that your radar's really I, right? I don't, I don't mind so much if, if they're finishing second. It is uh, immensely frustrating. Don't get me wrong. It is immensely First place frustrating. loser. But if they're finishing second, you know that you are at least on the right sort exactly. of horse. Exactly. What worries me is when they're running terribly and you don't mm. know why they're running terribly and you can't work out where yeah. you're going wrong. At least my horses are finishing second. The problem is that not, very rarely do we get paid out for second, but... I think I was telling you before I come on this. I've been doing the spotlights in the in the racing post the last couple of days. I think my last ten spotlights all lost, but I think four or five of them finished second. We just had that one there finish second, Zban. Yeah. So he's going to turn. It will turn, uh, and probably when it does turn, we'll have probably two or three in a row. It's, I often say it's the a bit boxing like, career will be it's, over. <laughs> it's not like boxing; it's like football. Strikers and all that. They always say, "I don't know whether it's nonsense or whatever," but they do say, don't they? Oh, strikers go on really bad, bad runs where they can't hit a barn door, and then suddenly they get one in off the bum, and then the rest of them score. You know, the rest mm. of them all win. I sort of agree. You call yourself I'm, Andre Gray? Or <laughs> yeah. or I sort of agree with Graham. I'm quite like sort of. I don't know, if you do it often enough, you sort of build up a bit of an immunity to it in a way, in terms of just being quite like philosophical about it, in terms of there's so many variables in a horse race. There's so much stuff that can go wrong. You're going to back more losers than you are winners. And if they're finishing second or third and you're doing most things right, like you don't know why you know, the horse hasn't run. It's ultimately out of your control. And as long as you're sort of hitting relatively close to the bullseye, eventually it will come good. And I think Encouraging just to... words from a blase, yeah. Neil Hubbard. Look at him, he's even angling, <laughs> isn't he? He's, uh, he's loving the philosophical <laughs> yeah. side of things. Let's have a look at some social comments then. As promised, let's get up. Let's have a little look. Jack Rogers comes onto the show. Surely some each way value here in dire. Quick word then, returning. Is this ground going to be ideal for her first time up? She got the class. Yeah, I wasn't convinced. So the one thing she has got in her favour, obviously she does get the uh, allowance in here from, from, from the Colts, which I think is, is a plus for her. But I just thought she was taking on some fairly smart types here. Hardened older horses. Yeah. Older horses won six of the last four of this classic generation have taken the rest. Uh, okay, some more socials. What have we got on the screen? Let's have a look. Ian Green comes on the screen. Snazzy Jazzy. Oh, it's cost me a few quid, that horse this year, Ian. And Dyer, another one then. Looks the one each way. Okay, uh, good stuff. Thanks, Ian. What else we got? We've got another one coming up on the screen. No, no, just a two. All right, we're keeping it at that. Well, good luck to you out there. What price is Dyer now? Any uh, fluctuations? Yeah, nine. So eight to one. I, I really liked her as a juvenile last year. She was really good. She went to all of the um, all of the big races. She ran her heart out. Was she first and second pretty much every race that she ran in? Um, yeah. Really and, good. And this, at this track. Yeah, so this is a bit of a tough introduction. Is it the rock fact she won on the Oso Shot? I can't remember. 102, yeah. There's actually a really interesting Godolphin one here, in here called um, 
Zahuski as well. I mean, like he, he beat Hedman on his debut last year. That was a really good run. Charlie Appleby, what looks his second string. Yeah, yeah. and then he was um, like fifth in a Craven, which was fine. Then he was off for the rest of the year, came back in Dubai as they often do. It was it the was run really in the Craven good. which put me off because yeah. he didn't really look in love with it. The, 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 he was immediately gelded after that, wasn't he? I think. Yeah, as and well. it has, I, I know what you mean. It's just, it's whether they are looking at maybe some later targets again for him, potentially. The challenge stakes is always a competitive race. Really looking forward to calling this one out. I thought Calusi was another lay here, I've got to say. Pogo's worth a mention as well. Uh, Kieran Schumark, Charlie Hills, uh, ran a blinder in the Hunt Cup at 33s. Came out on Windsor, nearly broke the track record from the front. Expect that to be taken on Happy Power up front. Mm -hmm. uh, last thoughts, chaps? Well, let's hope that Glorious Journey gets a nice track through here from the leaders because I think that he's going to be in the right spot over on the far side. That has looked to be the place where you want to be today. Let's hope they don't all rush down. A little bit of late money for ne for Namos, the German. Yes, uh, indeed, who will like the ground. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Moore takes the ride, drawn Snazzy on the Snazzy Jazzy, well. pretty weak, out to 27s. Actually, the outsider of the whole field now, Snazzy Jazzy. First time Jazzy. cheek pieces as well for the Snazzy Jazzy. Adam Kirby going for a quick double. Good luck to you if you're still in the game and hoping for a double or trebles or wherever you're going with your hackers. Let us know what you've got running up later on. But for now, it's the challenge stakes and off they go. And glorious journey, not the best away. Suzuki, Charlie Appleby's runner, he's lost it from the start as well. The pace is going to be as expected. Pogo, Foxtrot Lady, she's up there as well. Looking for happy power. He likes to get on with it. Namos a bit keen on the far side. Kalusi taking a keen hold. Graham, I'm going to come to you because yeah. don't want glorious journey there. No, this is not where I wanted glorious journey to be at all. Nothing's gone one from that far behind today. I didn't see him being behind Kalusi. Lucy, that's for sure at this stage. Neil right? Hubbard. Yeah, Happy Power is your favourite at the minute, and I think we can see why. He's got a really nice position. Uh, Snazzy Jazzy just uh, putting his head um, up there as well into third, and he's shortened right up. But, they steadied um, it a little bit, I think. Yeah. Snazzy Jazzy is going up. They're all taking their hold. Let's see what Kalusi's got to offer here, guys. dyer has got a nice tug. A couple of social comments out there. They'll be giving her a run. James Doyle, right out the back on Glorious Journey. Not where he usually comes from. Full of running. Where are we going? Happy Power, last off the bridle. Neil Hubbard, the market. Yeah, Happy Power is your favourite, but Pogo is still sticking on there. He's got that rail, Pogo, Graham Robway called it. Here comes Glorious. Can he get there too late? Uh, it's looking good for Happy Power if you're on Happy Power now. Just Go on, Glorious. Power. Come on, Glorious. Too you're lovely. Come on, power. this is it. Glorious is going to take him up, isn't he? Come on then, we've got Happy Power going for it. He's got first run on Glorious Journey. Looks like he's going to get there a bit too late once again. You've got to be on that rail. You've got to be up with the pace. Pogo just going to give best to Happy Power. Well done, Neil Hubbard. Got over the line there. Sylvester D'Souza really enjoyed that one. Hat-trick landed for King Power. They took out the Cornwallis Stakes as well. What a day they are having. Pogo, the pace setter, held on for second. All went wrong at the start for Glorious Journey. As for the others, Kalusi. What do we do with him now, Graham Robway? Yeah, fresh. Straight in all season, he now Calusi he looks so good at Ascot. Maybe he's just one of these Ascot wonders. Ooh, Hunt Cup next year. We've seen a few of those, year. haven't we? Hunt Cup next year. Have you been year. in the or has he waited out with that? Oh, I think, uh, again, this was an afterthought, wasn't it? Would they have not just waited for yeah, the yeah. Balmoral? One, 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 you're going to be waited out, oh, okay, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Again, guys, what are you thinking out there? Can anything win from off the pace today at Newmarket? We go over to the stand side, of course, tomorrow. Who are the front runners? Are you feverishly now looking them out in your members' club? And your comments in running. Zuzuki's run all right there, hasn't he? Yeah, because he was um, well Zikusi, out. The, I should say. Zakuski even. Because he was well out the rear with Glorious Journey early doors. And if you're um, thinking that was a comeback run, that's not yeah. too bad, actually, against the pace bar. Snazzy Jazzy in fifth and a bit too keen. Namos, the German rider. Uh, Ryan Moore could do with the winner on the day, couldn't he? But happy power. Nice, uncomplicated horse. Well, how low did he go? Um, well, he went... He, he never actually went bigger than what his SP was because he was always um, up there in the right position. And his Did the market just react shorter. when Glorious Journey missed the kick? Because that looked like one of his big rivals, didn't it? And I think if, you, if you're an in-running player and you watch as much racing as we do and you're out there and you watch all the time, we knew, didn't we, really after a furlong that Glorious Journey was bang up against it. Yeah, and he immediately went out to double figures. So if you bear in mind that he was probably trading at around 6-7-1 to one in fractional terms, as soon as the stalls opened and he missed the kick slightly, he was out to 10-11-1. to one. So he was yeah, three or four prices... Um, place um, points bigger whereas happy power was generally around sort of four or five to one pre-race the stalls opened and his price only went in one direction really good performance from him really nice performance from you've him. got a little spring in your step there haven't you a little because bit well a we ended up charity back yeah and we ended up dutching two runners in this and we ended up with first and third so overall it, like if you bat them both each way which they sort yeah. of were each way prices at the start then you would have had two returns for your money there yeah i think glorious journey i'd like to see i mean he's a five-year-old now isn't he? i'd like to see him sort of campaign during the all weather 
during the winter. He's just such a lovely, honest horse, isn't he? One one twelve is his official rating. Andy Kappa will rate it around him, and it's probably the one that got away from him there. Because had he been up there, I think the way he's closed there, you'd like to think he might have come out on top. Yeah, well, it, it, it would have been close, close to, to winning. I think if he'd been on the shoulder of Happy Power all the way through. But really, the the front three are all likable, you know, solid. Solid. Who, it's kind of like we were saying about Dai. Yeah, she was taking on some really, really tough and genuine performers and uh, if you watch the way that Pogo has run here for me that 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 just um, tells you that there is a little bit of a bias towards that far side rail front runners because yeah I, I just I just couldn't see I, I know Pogo wasn't a complete outsider but there's no way Pogo should be finishing that far ahead of Glorious Journey Perhaps, for me yeah I don't know he, he's got he has got some new market form Graham and he he is one of those yeah I, I do see what you mean I think probably flattered by the I, I think he was tight in the market now, wasn't he? Mm. Because punters are latching onto the biases there. And he, he's got one way of running now. They've worked him out. If you watch back that run in the Hunt Cup, it was a huge run. Yeah, and I was a little bit concerned by it because I thought that he's a bit better on better ground. So that was the thing that perhaps sort of put me off. So I'm not going to say that the ground isn't as bad as what it is, but um, yeah. it, it probably just proves that he's incredibly versatile. The only thing I would say about going overboard on biases and, and what, what has happened in the past and probably will happen at some point today as well. Here we go. The jockeys are not stupid. I mean, they will know. They will have seen what we have seen today now. And they would have seen what? How many races are now? Five? Four or five on the whole card. We've had a couple live on here. They will be sitting there. All the jockeys will be sitting in the waiting room going, oh, it's hard to win from off the pace. So in the, next yes. few races, in the next few races, you might well see four, five, six jockeys deciding they all want to be on the pace. Burn up on the and then you house. end up with a complete burn-up. And it don't matter how much of a bias there is towards the front runners. If they go too quick, then there's no bias there at all. The horses will pick them off from behind, whether yeah. there's a bias or not. Yeah. So you 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 get stuck. It's hard as a punter. You can't be too dogmatic. You have to be a little bit flexible and say to yourself, right, I can see what's going on. The jockeys are going to see what's going on. This will change either today, tomorrow, at some point along here. This bias towards the front runners will change and horses will start winning from behind because yeah. what will happen is jockeys will realise they've got to be on the pace. There'll be competition up front. Once you get competition up front, it sets out for those kind of And as I mentioned, well put, Graham, and as I mentioned, they do switch the stalls to the stand side. Mm. So the rails, I think, are just big at this meeting. But you're right. Could we see them going too hard up front? Talking about change, well, guess what? Now we welcome back a jumps race <laughs> because it's time for the Persian War. And uh, we go to Chepstow. And uh, the Persian War, the novice hurdle, grade two novice hurdle, early in the season, it seems, doesn't it? However, horses that have won this race can go on to win big races at the Cheltenham Festival. Cheltenham Festival, Chelsea, has been a little bit topical mm. this week, hasn't it? Just a tad. Mm. When do we think about switching into jumps mode, Graham Robway? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm in jumps mode as soon as this meeting comes along, for sure, because I'm, I'm, I don't like to say I favour jumps, but I do. So I, I'm a jumps man. Why don't you like to say it then? Well, because... <laughs> I do, because <laughs> I do like to bet on the flat, and, yeah. and I you have, love it all. Uh, I, but I, you I, adore I, jumps. I, I have a lot of wins on the flat that I probably I should be your agent, don't get I? on the jumps. <laughs> but from a pure entertainment perspective, and something that I can get more attached to. I'd probably be well, a jump course. trainer over a flat trainer. If, <laughs> yes, if because... I was given the choice when I take out my license, I'd probably go for a jump one. But you know, more money in the flat game, there, Graham. <laughs> Well, there is more money flat game. There used to be. But if they, like you were saying earlier, Cheltenham, I mean, if, if they keep inventing these new like races as well, it just gives you more and more chances to win Cheltenham races. I mean, Willie Mullins loving it, isn't he? I mean, mm. a mare's chase. Willie Mullins must be sitting there rubbing his hands together going, oh, yeah, that's another one I can win at a short price. I mean, <laughs> I'm assuming that was an impression of Willie Mullins. <laughs> was it, was it, did you somewhere in your in your bank of your mind? We're getting into the mind of Graham Robway today. Scary place to be, and uh, we've had a commentary and now a Willie Mullins impression. I think. I think. Uh, let's not. Would you like to commentate on this? You're not going to be able to do it. <laughs> Neil Hubbard, would you like to take the commentary on no. the Persian? Well, it's a jumps race. Yeah, not especially, but. Um... No, I think we'll keep you on the machine, Neil. Okay. Unlike Graham, who doesn't shirk a challenge, sometimes <laughs> yeah, to his I'm detriment. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm incredibly are, just want to stay in my comfort zone. More, you. You're more yeah. relaxed and a little bit more careful. <laughs> Quite right. That's why you do what you do. But listen, let's get the market up, shall we? <laughs> Welcome back to Jumps Racing. Happy days. Let's have a look at the screen because we're going to have a hot pot here. It is a McFabulous. The wonderfully named McFabulous. Heads the market, 1.63. Court and bold, 9.8. One for the team, 10.5 Everglow. So we were 
We, it wasn't ever green. It wasn't ever whatever. But ever glow, fifteen point five. Get around fifteen. Petra Star twenty three. And Legends Legends Ride at forty. Has this been all one way traffic for McFabulous? Yeah, he was sort of about four to five, I think, when betting opened. So he's into one point six two now. So yeah, shortening up all the time. So what's that? You're sort of like eight to thirteen sort of mark now. Well touted by Paul Nichols. Sort of Paul Nichols in his um, season preview on. On Betfair, on betting. Betfair, he's sort of talking yeah, that was about this week, wasn't it, Neil? Yeah, and he's sort of talking about this horse potentially being a stayers hurdle um, candidate, which is really interesting. He was, he, he was really impressive at the end of last season, winning at yeah. um, Kempton. He on was, his final oh, that was great. Day. I was on him that day. Brilliant. Yeah, really nice performance. Um, carries a penalty here, and on ratings, he's not actually as far clear as the betting would have you believe. Like. Ahead of one for the team, what, he's £5 ahead of one for the team and he's got to give him £3? Even, um, I think, Petrostar, he's only rated £6 and he's got to give him um, £3. So it's not it's not quite a, the penalty, like on, on paper at least, on the ratings and on everything, it's not quite the penalty kick that the betting would have you believe. Shall I give you some previous winners this race, see if we can uh, put some meat on the McFabulous bone? Uh, let's look at the Nichols. L Bandit won it for him in 2016. Uh, not the top notch we remember. He has had wonderful charmer, of course, wonderful horse, and Silviana Coconti, uh, of course, back in 2010. Great horses, Graham, have won this race, haven't they, in the past? Fingle, Fingle Bay. Bay. Yeah, just it comes to mind. Time Hill, of course. Oh, Secret Investor, I should say, for Paul Nichols as well, in 2018. Black Lion took it for Team Twiston Davis. Well, if we're talking status hurdles, yeah, Revton Savola won this as well. He, he Going way back yeah. when yeah. Uh, for Nick Williams. So, yeah, absolutely. So, in the last 10 years, these trainers do target this race. The interesting one, I think, probably is uh, the Hobbs horse, whose name is, of course, Everglow. F- n- never run over hurdles. That's got to, I, I imagine the Kevin Morleys of this world, our trends expert, would be going, no, 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 no. But from a, from a trainer, creature's a habit point of view, this is probably one of the better horses in the stable. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, I just thought this race was a good opportunity for a lay of, of Matt Fabulous. I'm not opposed to that. I don't um, mind getting stuck into lay and Matt Fabulous yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, wow. there, there's... There, don't get me wrong, I like this horse. But I think there's enough um, reasons to want to take McFabulous on. Go on. As Neil's already said, he's not that far clear on ratings. And on racing post ratings, at the, at the weights, he's actually got a bit to find with mm. one for the team. So I don't want to be back in a horse at odds on who has got to find something. Then you go on to the fact that I often think, Paul Nichols or his horses, they need their first couple of runs. They don't really hit their top, top mm, stride until... November, December. This mm. time of year, not always the time to follow Paul Nichols. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that he's, he's, he's often gone five, six, seven timers at this Chepstow meeting. He does run a lot of his best horses here. But generally speaking, on a whole, from a, a sort of holistic perspective, his horses, I think, tend to hit their best around November, December. And this is the time when... So I'm not expecting McFabulous to be 100% here. I think he'd maybe be 90% this yeah. race. Shall I, pour a, sh- shall I give a bit more weight to that? Do you um, remember his hurting debut last year? Mm. He was a great horse in bumpers, wasn't he? They thought he was one of the best bumper horses they'd had in, you know, for a long time. Um, Silviano kind of Conti type. He could not jump a mm. hurdle when he made his early debut here last year yeah and 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 yeah that's exactly what i was going to say was it took him time didn't it last year to 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 find his best form like at this time last season he wasn't the horse that he was in february march now i'm not suggesting that he's a spring horse but maybe i am you think oh they, oh no we, we are back in jumps mode we're talking about winter or spring horses but it does come <laughs> round to it i think the schooling had a lot to do with it mm. uh, i remember he jumped really well at Kempton, didn't he, on his Well, he did. He absolutely pinged it. That was just such a great day because I'd spent a preview evening with Paul Nichols and the one horse that he wanted to talk to me about was McFabulous. He said, I honestly think this will be a 150 horse. What is he now? He's up to 145. So Paul, once again, funnily enough, has been right. That day at Kempton when he won... He is a course winner, of course, in his bumper. He was a 1-3-2, so he's got a, what, a, the best part of a stone for that. Um, if he jumps, he wins. Guys, it's a, very, think, it's a very different race, though, this one, to the one he won at Kempton. I'll be disappointed if he doesn't win this. Uh, a very different race. I mean, I watched that race at Kempton. What's a, that was a big handicap hurdle, wasn't it? Ultra competitive, uh, real fast track around Kempton, speed test. This is a much more galloping course, a bit of a weird course, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. With the bumps it, and yeah, stuff like it, that. And, and a lot of people, a lot of good 
you know, ex-jump jockeys that I've spoken to say it's a quicker track than you think. What price is he, Neil? Are you going to lay then? I, it, for me, I think he will win, but I'm he's happy drifting. for you to take the mantle. Yeah, he's drifting a little bit, so he's out to 1.68. So um, I think I'm sort of with I'm sort of with Graham on this. He, he he is the one in here who you think is probably the classy one in here. Although in saying that, one for the team was really progressive last year. He won a really nice handicap on Betfair Hurdle. But day. he's a handicapper, isn't he? I'm well, sure so he's fabulous at this stage. No, that McFabulous is going to be the one that he's finally coming good. Get the get, get that early. Uh, early bad hurdling out of the way. If he jumps like he did at Kempton, this is all over. But in terms of like, if we're if we're looking at like the difference between these two horses, McFabulous is rated five pounds higher than one for the team, and he's got to give him three pounds. So you know, there's no, then it all becomes then it all comes down to fitness. They're jockeying for positions at the start. That we should say is the lay on there, Neil Hubbard. Yeah, let's just lay this now. So he's one point seven five. We'll add right. that to the bet slip. So a lay is he's just on the betting. drift, isn't he? Yeah. So a lay is just betting against something to happen. So we're betting against McFabulous to win here. We'll add that to the bet slip. We'll take a £50 bet. So if McFabulous wins, um, it'll cost us £35. And then we are uh, we have every other horse in the field running for us to win £50. We're building up to Group 1 action here. The Phillies mile comes up at 335 I've got the chair syndrome here. I've got the Keeley syndrome. The chair's sinking like Graham <laughs> Robway's tipping today. Your chair's already way down there. I can see that. I'm just going to give up on it. Neil Hubbard's keeping himself exalted company where he should be. The chairs have gone, but we've not gone. We've got, what, another three races then, haven't we? We've got this lovely Persian war coming up. Enjoy it wherever you're going. We're going to be able to have a nice chat through this, guys. Mm. Jump Racing is back here on Racing Post Live. Will McFabulous go and do it? He's going to settle himself out the back. They are off and running in the 2020 Persian war. Taking it up then is, it looks like the Fergal O'Brien train caught and bowled. Connor Brace taking the ride. They're taking each other on. Petra Starr, the Jeffries horse, Keelan Woods, at way too keen. How did he go over the first McFabulous? Did he stretch for that one a little bit, McFabulous? And he, he, he landed a bit yeah, awkward, yeah, he? Didn't landed he? a bit strangely. They're going a good pace here, though. They seem to be going fairly fast. Unbelievable. They're actually giving me a pillow, would you believe it? So do I need it. Now, listen, <laughs> two, two are taking it on up front. Will I go for the pillow? Where is one for the team, Graham Robway? Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's, I'm it's taking going. a pillow for the team. <laughs> the pillow's go, going up in the air when we have a winner later, like the hats. Ah, They'll be like I'm hats back. off, pillows up. But uh, yeah, no, one for the team's just on the outside. Uh, seems to be travelling uh, quite nicely. It was a little bit of late money for one for the team as well. He was quite well supported late, wasn't he, Neil? Yeah, and he's into 11 to 2 now in running. And um, yeah, as I say, like he won a really nice race at Newbury um, last year, over three miles. So this Ooh. is him coming back in trip. But he looks a nice horse. He, he, he actually looks a progressive one for this year. What are you on about him at Fabulous? He's dinging, pinging all the way. He's got into a lovely rhythm now. He only asked us about Harry the first one and he made inside. a mess of it. <laughs> Come on, he's absolutely tanking now. What price has he gone? Before we go and have a, look, have a look at Everglow out the back for Richard Johnson. Yeah, a little bit bigger. 1.74, so out to 8 to 11, having been around 4 to 6. So we've got a tear away lead now. It's Petra Star. Keenan Woods can do little about this. Doesn't even like the bend. In fact, oh, I don't like the bend. We see that at Kemp, uh, Chepstow here, don't we? They're going out onto the far side. Petra Star's running all over the place here. Get around for Brian Carver and Ella Picard. Big day for that stable. They're going up the far side. They're in the Indian file. Everglow out the back then how's he jumped so far for a debut on Neil you're grimacing yeah he's just I don't know he just didn't seem to be traveling that well when they turned out the home straight nothing to do with the stable and how they often run off he was just sort of detached a little bit but he seems to have um, sort of um, latched onto the rear a little bit better now and he's traveling a little bit more comfortably he just looked a little bit I don't know awkward maybe for a few strides in that home straight what's he gone out to on the exchange yeah well he actually went out to close to 30s but he's back into around 18 19 now so oh, okay um, so yeah. winner of the race last year Philip Hobbs with time Hill who went on to be very closely up in the finish was he fourth I think in the Albert Bartlett wasn't it is Everglow going to come through and pick him up at the moment caught and bowled looks like he's going to take on Petrosdale surely going to run himself into the ground a little bit of a mistake there from Legends Ride Jamie Snowden John Joe O'Neill Jr massive season for John Joe O'Neill Jr over the jumps M now McFabulous is getting going one for the team got out the back Graham not yeah, ideal no, he's had a couple of sloppy jumps there one for the team he's just knocked him back I'm not sure he's going that well actually one for the team must yeah. be out in price Neil yeah double figures easily now so he's like 15, 16 to 1 one for the team he doesn't yeah, five he's been out. nudged along now OK, I love this bit at Cheps, though, don't you? The Welsh National Meeting, these lovely maiden hurdles that they have there. We are coming towards the business end when they really start wheeling around the home turn. I think we're around about four out now, guys, aren't we? Can we call it McFabulous for me all day long? Although this get around seems to be going well. Yeah, get around is, well, he's still 20s or so, but yeah, McFabulous is short and right up now, so he's into about two to five now. Caught and bold, still going okay, though, on the front end. He's racing really enthusiastic out there. It's just a case of where he can get home. But Team Fergal O'Brien. He brings what race a, fitness into it, at least, doesn't he? start to the jump season they've had again, Fergal O'Brien. He a small year, horse, can set your clock by the form. Graham Robway, yeah. who do you want to be on? Yeah, McFabulous is going well, but... Um, 
Yeah, one for the team's not completely out of it. Yeah, oh, just slowed down a little stay, bit, isn't he? Isn't he? As well. I'm not sure I want to be on McFabulous here. No, he's out to uh, four to five yeah, now. Just coming under pressure a little bit, McFabulous. He's a gonna legend's need to be ride fit. coming in for it as well. So as we turn in then, this will be key for McFabulous backers. He's on the bridle. Will he get the spit? Petra Star looks like the gas is emptying on that one now. As Cotton Bold takes it up. Now McFabulous has come back in. Surely the market's coming for this, Neil Hubbard. Yeah, massive odds on now. Um, and he wins one, the third last. Away to, he goes. One to nine now. Catch me if you can. One for the team. Surely the, probably the danger, isn't it? Get around once again, rattling. Caught and bold's there. It's a case of how far for Harry Cobden. He's having a little look around in the ears of Prick. The lovely jump there as well. Caught and bold out to his light. This was just between these two. Game over, oh, boys, yeah, isn't this, it? This Always one. looking through the legs, Harry Cobden. Graham Robway, what are we looking at yeah, here? This looks like it could be a top class hurdler in the making. He's coming away on the bridle. This is absolutely lovely scenes. And one, just a case of pinging for the last. Harry Cobden was desperate to hold on to. He did this at Kempton. One to go over the hopes so not. This is a not a gosh and moment. Is it coming up? He's having a good look, actually. At the hurdle. One, two, three. Oh, Ping the way it. he goes. Once and this is a class on, animal, this in the making. This is McFabulous. Paul Nichols said this is with Sable Star. Couldn't get him right last year. They'll be absolutely delighted with this. Caught and bold. I think we can say it's probably an autumn spring horse. He finishes second. One for the team looked like he needed it. Get around, run a good race. That was game over a long way out. Neil Hubbard, story of the market. Hit even money in running, though, when they sort of turned into the home straight, which is just when he was... I wouldn't say being niggled along, but it's the one moment when you thought, well, you could sort of, I'm not saying you could understand even money, but you could understand him going out in price to what he was. Um, Court and Bowles run a really good race in terms of, it's always difficult when you bring that sort of, let's say, summer jumping into the jumps proper. Uh, jumps proper. You never know exactly how it's going to correlate, but he brought race fitness to his side. He made the most of it. He was out there on the front end. He's run a really good race. And one for the team has pretty much run like he's a three-miler. I take on. him out the race, Graham. Not today. You've, you've, you've been burnt a little bit there. But I think the project that you might get some dough out of later on. Yeah, I, I thought it was quite a nice performance. It but, was. Um, he might be a good one for that uh, the old fixed brush three-mile hurdle mm. on Betfair Chase Day up at Haydock. The three-mile one. That's a isn't it? Yeah. Going there with a the novice. So usually uh, the open Oh, sorry, one for the team. Sorry. Well, yeah, one, one for the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, listen, he, he definitely wants a bit of a trip, doesn't he? As we yeah. saw yeah. last season, he might need a run or two to come good. Now, so we're just watching the replay here. I mean, look, if you're on McFabulous, did you get the even money out there? There's a result on the screen. Four to six, bigger than expected. The Persian War, grade two. He won't be in novice company, of course. What is it? After, like, November, isn't it? They've done yeah, novice they changed thing. it, didn't Have they? Have they moved it a little bit further? So he could run in yeah. this, else he wouldn't normally be allowed to run in this, I don't he, think. Can you get second season novices in this? My mind tells me you can. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe if they haven't won their novice season, obviously. I think they changed the parameters of the they, novice dates because of did, the shutdown. Of COVID, yeah. So I don't think normally McFabulous would have necessarily been allowed to run in this. He's a lovely horse. Yeah, this, so, this is a good horse, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. let's say this goes out. Oh, I mean, we're dreaming, aren't we? But let's say this goes out of novice company on its next start. Would you would you look at something like? I mean, come on, we're not talking about Paisley Park, are we? But this is, I mean, the rapid rise that he had. But why not? We, we are the stairs division is hmm. is a division that you know you can you can have a big say, and if you've got something, they, I think will they go chasing with him? He's definitely. Well, it's interesting that Paul Nichols said you know you can see him making up into a stairs hurdle because although you said about his jumping, generally at Kempton he was really good, and bar the very first fence here, he's jumped really nicely, like he would jump a fence and it's normally Paul Nichols way that he would send them over fences as opposed to sticking over hurdles so it wouldn't be a massive surprise if he didn't go over fences and something like you know the mar you know two and a half mile chases something like oh, that it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if you me and Neil granted luck was in here in, in two or three years time calling McFabulous in the in the gold cup I think he could be a gold couples. <laughs> You're not going to call him in the gold cup. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way. Well, they'll, be run, they'll be running to other mediums, let me tell you, if that's the case. But, uh, yeah, you're quite right. He does look like a grade one horse. I think we can agree with that, can't we? Mm. He's just won a grade two on the bridle, albeit a slightly soft one. You might have a completely contrasting view to that. Get it in below if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook Live. Twitter, hashtag RP Live. Let us know you're out there still. We've got plenty of time to get your socials in. It's time to go back to Newmarket on the flat. Delighted to have the jumps back. We will in November be honing into the jumps game. Don't you worry about that. Betfair Chase Day, open meeting at Cheltenham, Labrooks Trophy, whatever you like, we will be there. We've got a lot coming your way to the end of the year. Do not worry about that. Delighted to tell you that the jumpers are coming back. But for now, it's Group 1 action, and it's the Phillies Mile. And looking at what we've seen so far, 
with the trends. Pretty gorgeous, who was ho holding up the market earlier, Neil Hubbard. Let's go to the 335 at Newmarket. She's drawn away from the fence. Has that included in her price? She's drawn in 10, yeah. And we've pretty much got 10 runners, haven't we? 11 runners, yeah. So, But Pretty Gorgeous heads the market at four, so three to one in your fractional terms. Indigo Girl, 5.2. Um, near enough joint with Shale, 5.4, Isabel Giles, 5.9, and then double figures the rest, led by Zabil Queen at 10 and Mother Earth at 23s. So, Neil Hubbard, let's get the protocol out of the way. What was your most likely winner at the start of the day? Have you changed your mind in the 2020 Phillies Mile? Uh, well, my, my selection at the start of the day was Isabel Giles. And I don't really see much need to shy no. away from that, to be honest. Got a nice draw in four based on what we've seen. I do think the Irish set the standard here. Pretty gorgeous in shale. So I've um, like no issues with those two sort of being towards the head of the market. But Isabel Giles just sort of has the sort of profile of horse that means she's often overlooked for the more sexier type of runners. Um, and Shale and Pretty Gorgeous are, are, are those sorts of horses. This is a really good race because of what happened over at Longchamp at the weekend, because um, Pretty Gorgeous probably wouldn't be running here normally. So this has suddenly become a much harder task for Isabel Giles. But um, she looks progressive. The ground won't be a problem. She just looks tough, uncomplicated. You know what you're going to get from her. And um, yes, a, a bit like we said with Happy Power versus Calusi and how you can be more confident of one running their race over another, I think you can just be pretty confident that Isabel Giles is going to run to a pretty decent standard. Now, there might be one, maybe two, that might be better than her, but generally she's going to be there or thereabouts. And so I think a win and place bet on her is the way to play this, or the way that I want to play it anyway. We're 10 minutes away then from the f Group 1 of the weekend, the first Group 1 of the weekend, the Phillies' time to shine, the Phillies' mile. Neil Hubbard likes Isabella Giles, drawn in four. What does Mr Keeley think? Paul Keeley, joining the party. I can't believe there are three Phillies ahead of Isabella Giles in the betting for the Phillies' mile because I think she's absolutely tailor-made for this task. She absolutely loves soft ground, as she showed when she won the Prestige Stakes at Goodwood by seven lengths, absolutely romping away. She had to battle last time, but it was still to two length score, but that was on ground that was much faster than she'd like. She's a daughter of Ballard, who won a Dewhurst on soft ground, and I think she's got to go very, very close. I've been making some dough as Mr. Keeley on Isabella Giles so far. My issue with Isabella Giles, while we're concentrating on this horse, is the two races that she's won, the favourites in the race, well, certainly the Beckett horse, okay, she probably was better than the Beckett horse at Goodwood, didn't run its race. Mm. And Monday, it was the Bally Doyle horse that was expected to put it up to her last time on the rolling mile, albeit on ground she probably might not have liked, Isabella, just ran no sort of race whatsoever. So she's almost been winning by default to my mind. However, five to one, looking at the stall four, Graham Robby? I think that uh, if Neil fancies Isabella Giles here, there might be a bit of scope to uh, to get out of this betting running with a profit, you know, because the, gonna... the way that the, the, the results have gone already, I can see the in-running players here wanting to clamber on these front runners. So as soon as they see what, what, what goes to the lead and, and what gets maybe towards that far side rail, I can see the, the price crashing. Yep. On that, and it does look like it will be Isabella Giles who will lead from a decent drawing store forward. Can we all agree that she, at the furlong marker, she really ought to be there or thereabouts? Yeah. Well, we can play that on the exchange. We can definitely back her uh, pre-play and then put in an in-running lay. So we now's can the time, now. Now's, now's the now. time. Yeah. So it, um, Isabella Giles is five point nine. So that's about five to one. So um, we'll add that to our bet slip, five point nine, and we'll have fifty pound win on her at five point nine. And then, as Graham was saying, the expectation is she'll probably trade a little bit shorter now. How short will she go? That's where it's a little bit subjective or there's mm. an element of guesswork there. But we can probably be pretty confident that she would probably go, what, three to one, two to one, three to one? I reckon fairly early in the race, if she gets the lead, she would probably trade half her price, would you say? Yeah, probably, yeah. So, so if we go, let's think for, yeah, so three to one, shall we say, if we look to get our, our state back on Isabella Giles there. So what that basically means is if she hits three to one in running, we will have our lay bet matched. And so what that means is if she still goes on to win the race, we'll win £95. If she doesn't end up winning the race, we'll be neutral on it. So we've um, sort of put a little mm. safety net in there. So we'll, put, we'll, we'll place that lay bet now and we'll do the important thing, because it's unmatched, that we'll keep when it goes in running. So, yeah, so we're back to pre-play and we'll look to lay her in running. All about Isabella Giles then for the team here. And I have to say, having, having picked holes in her, in her performances, if you like, and her form, I just, you know, 
I think they'll be fancying their chances from stall four. Now let's talk about Pretty Gorgeous and Shale before we go to Indigo Girl of John Gosden's bidding to do the Rainbow View route for George Strawbridge under Rob Havlin. The two Irish horses, Graham, they're two, it's two to one to Shale, isn't it? After she took out the Moy Glare. They're back on easier ground. That's when Pretty Gorgeous got her victory over Shell. One's drawn in nine, that's Shell, for Donica O'Brien. And one's drawn in ten for Pretty Gorgeous, Joseph O'Brien. <laughs> Aidan does have a runner in this race, I should say. It's called Mother Earth. Uh, he's got two in this, Snowfall and Mother Earth. William Buick and James Doyle take the rise. Mother Earth looks like it could be a pace angle. Now, if you're Team O'Brien... And let's face it, you know, all of the connections are kind of, they're kind of, you know, they're connected. Let's put it that way. I think that's probably the most politically correct way to say it. Uh, if you're, you know, Mother Earth, who doesn't really have the form to be taking out a Phillies mile, all, you know, all barring accidents, strange things have happened. Are you going to make a slight beeline off the road or are you going to try and get Isabella Giles at it? What are you going to try and do? Are you suggesting that there might be... Um, Team tactics. There might be a little bit of, yeah, let's go and try yes. and spoil the race for Isabella <laughs> Giles. Yes, yes. They should have had a pacemaker for an able, shouldn't they? Let's face it, you know. As John Gosden always says, and no doubt he would say it, you know, that, you know let's just hope we get a clean race here, you know. And, uh, wow. you know, Indi- Indigo Girl, she did look good. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm, I am loathe to make uh, the big assumptions like that before the race because I, I've done that before. Uh, and then got, it. and got it wrong, you know, and then that doesn't happen, and then Isabella Giles makes all, and you're like, oh well, I, I thought Aiden, was, oh, oh, it didn't happen, or I thought Joseph, <laughs> and then you sort of you're tying yourself up in knots, and yeah. it's again one of those things you have to pick your poison. Like if you then if you decide that you, we're if, picking poison today here on Racing <laughs> Well, if, if you decide that, that that's what you're going to do, and you think right, that will ruin Isabella Giles, and then, if that doesn't happen, and then Isabella Giles wins, like I don't like to get beat like that. That you know that would hurt me. Whereas if, if you know, I'd rather just just take a risk that it, it's that it won't happen. If you know what I mean. Hmm, okay, there's a lot of pace on in this race, isn't there? It's not just Mother Earth and Snowfall that would be looking to get her at it early. Lilac Road is one that's likes to get on with it before. That's in eight, and also Dubai Fountain hmm. for PJ McDonald. You're nodding, Neil Hubbard, who's, who's one of these horses that Johnson just churns out rock solid, isn't she? Likes to get on with it and has some decent group form. And drawn one on the far rail. Yeah. So it's the perfect combo in terms of run style and uh, sort of the nature of the race sort of plays her strengths. Now, you're not saying she's going to be good enough or not, but because of her draw and her run style, she's going to have her best chance to win the race given how things are likely to play out. The, this yeah. is the, this, the thing for me. I think if I, if I was playing this race in running, then what is going to happen for me as an in-running player is I'm going to sit there and go, right, whatever goes to the front and is up there on the far rail, they're all going to be over bet. Because mm-hmm. everyone's going to be smashing to try and get on these ones because that's where the place being to be. Yeah. There might actually be some value in doing the opposite yeah. to what these Swing are. Against the tide. Right. Go against them and say, right, well, maybe maybe this will be the race, like we were saying just a minute ago after that last one. Maybe this will be the race where they all go too fast and they all fall in a hole and something flies down the middle, which hasn't been the place to be so far. But, of course, you've got to remember that because everything's come up the far side, that ground on the far side would be getting churned up a bit more. Maybe... As the race meeting goes on, the middle might become more the place to be, and you'll get better price about those ones as well. You talk about picking your poison and, uh, and things hurting you when you when you jump onto a trend and it and it dematerialises. <laughs> too it late. Is, yeah. It's painful, isn't it? Yeah, when you're Absolutely. on it one race too late. Oh, yeah. So pretty gorgeous, drawn on the outside, Neil. She was looking like she might go nine to four earlier. Touch five to two. She's on the way out, is she? Yeah, she's 100 to 30 now, 4.3. But just for context, like she, like. Um, Shale beat her in the Moy Glare, which when we were in the studio, Dave, and we were talking about what a brilliant race that was, pretty gorgeous, I think we were saying on RPRs was rated higher than Battleground and all of this sort of stuff. She went off 11 to 10 that day. She got a bump, didn't she? Yeah. Do you remember? And she and I like the way that she came back onto the bridle that day. I think it's the ground that's in yeah. her favour. I've got her over Shale, but I have to say stall 10 from what I've seen so far... It is, it, I think three to one is probably about the right price now. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, I agree with you on the ground definitely in terms of like Shale leads 2 1, doesn't she? I think we were saying. And, but, but the one for Pretty Gorgeous did, uh, did come on soft ground. So she's going to have that in her favour today. I don't know, like three to one, 11 to four about her now. She's drawn 10, granted. But as we've sort of alluded to, if you want to try and like understand how this might play out, she went off 11 to 10 for arguably as good a race, yeah. if not slightly better race, maybe in the Moy Glare. Um, 
I don't know, there's probably a smidge of value there in Pretty Gorgeous. So, uh, well, she is my play, like I say, and I think three to one each way is a bit of, is a bit thievery, but that draw, just something's going to need to lead on the, uh, you know, down the middle. Maybe it'll be one of the O'Brien runners. We've talked about Dubai Fountain, who, of course, sandwiched the Beal Queen, hot pot to beat Indigo Girl in the May Hill States. Now, that was at the Doncaster St. Ledger meeting, which we covered here on RP Live, usually a leading trial, Graham Robway, for this race. Now... It, we knew she'd be going to the Phillies Mile. That was the, that, that's the path that Rainbow View did for the same connections about 10, 12 years ago. A real hot pot Rainbow View was. However, I, I think they're just getting ready to go in, guys, as well, aren't they? Is she the beneficiary, Indigo Girl, if they go too hard? Yeah, she could be the one. She looked the one with raw pace, didn't she, that day when she won at Doncaster. She really, really picked up well. And John Gosden, to be fair, doesn't get it wrong too often with these Phillies, does he? He's very, very good with this type yeah. of horse. Uh, uh, I think there's a lot more to come from her. I, I've just got this gut feeling that, that, that this is going to be the race where they go too hard on the far side rail and something's going to fly late down the middle and get them all. But as we already said, I mean, I'm in terrible form and I just had my first winner of the day and that was my lay of the day. So I could be wrong. Well, listen, uh, this, uh, the turn of the tide is happening. Everyone keeps telling it. me that, but it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. <laughs> We're keeping him in the game here. The big bear's still with us. Listen, one or two more to go in. Last market moves from Neil Hubbard. Yeah, pretty gorgeous, really solid, 3.65, but all the money has been for Isabella Giles, who's just shading shale now in terms of second favourite. Indigo Girl, really solid. Here we go then. It's the 3.35 at Newmarket. We promise you group one action. It's up and coming and away they go. Indigo Girl, just slightly slow away. Rab Havlin's already chiving her away, but she, we know she's a hold-up horse, as expected. Isabella Giles nearly Ooh. taking them along. In, now, here we go. This is interesting. Lilac Road keeping more down the centre. Zabil Queen's up there. Pretty gorgeous up there. Shale going towards the far side with Mother Earth and Snowflake out the back. Indigo Girl's got a lot to do, guys. Who do we like? Yeah, there's a lot of pace on here, isn't there, by the looks of it? Isabel Giles Labour already been matched. <laughs> Star already. of Emirati in there for Kevin Ryan as well. Could he be another, this be another shot? In fact, this is really interesting, guys. Yeah. Graham Robway, only one going on the far rail. Yeah, I'm quite surprised about that. Maybe the jockeys, as I say, think that it's a bit more churned up on the far side coming down the middle this time. Neil Hubbard, talk about the market. Pretty gorgeous. She travels. Yeah, pretty gorgeous. Just about joint favourite with Shale, now um, at the minute. And Shale is just about favourite. Oh, so, will this be the grind? Isabel Giles leads them down the centre. Where are you getting excited about? In the Phillies mile. Indigo Girl starts to make a move. He's not gone for pretty gorgeous yet. It looks like the two on the far side. That trend's going to be absolutely knocked on his head because Dubai Fountain and Star of Emirati rowing away. Here comes the Bill Queen, favourite in the May Hill. Indigo Girl Indigo back Girl. on the bridle. It looks like the Brits are going to take this out unless pretty gorgeous can find. Shane Cross looking really confident now. This is going to be an absolutely fantastic finish. Dubai Seven Fountain horses in with going. a chance. Indigo Girl going for it. Shell looks beaten. Pretty gorgeous. Here she comes. Joseph O'Brien, what's this on the outside? Is it snowfall? Aiden O'Brien, is he going to take it out? Indigo Girl, one last lunge. Pretty gorgeous. He's absolutely out on her feet, but she's game. The rising finish is in her favour. And Joseph O'Brien, take a bow. You've got another group one. Pretty gorgeous for favourite backers. Indigo Girl, second. Snowfall, 50 to 1. Huge bright in third. Really interesting that Dubai Fountain, the only one who stayed up the rail and has really outrun the price. So everyone had a, well, the majority had a change of view and come down the middle, but actually Dubai Fountain, who actually stuck to the guns, okay, probably the hand was dealt and he had to stay where he was, uh, where she was, drawn one, he's run an absolute belter to that suggest that that, not bias, but, but, but being close to that rail is still really beneficial. Someone else is going to have to call the 410, let me tell you, because <laughs> the voice is just about to go here. I got really excited then. Why? Because we had a blanket finish. As Neil said, he could have called it there, Graham. Very, uh, I think a furlong out, but she just looked like she might wilt. She's gone again. Yeah, it, it turned into a real test of stamina, didn't it? You just wonder if they've gone fairly hard. Uh, Dubai Fountain on the far side, Isabella Giles, as Neil said. I mean, we, we were matched with that lay after about a furlong. You know what, Isabella great Giles shout. You, 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 you've come back. I told you this would happen. <laughs> you've come back. So at least we didn't lose anything on our yeah. Isabella Giles, but obviously she has blown out in the end. Probably just a little bit too keen for the early part of the race. Yeah, I thought, she though. was, I think. You're absolutely right. Yeah, she, yeah. Looked, and she was really pulling for her head early, wasn't she? If wanting it, to go faster. When she won the Rockfell, she had the stands rail, didn't she? She was able to get into that lovely rhythm and... She just looks like she's blown her head a little bit there. Indigo Girl has turned the, has turned the prominent bias on its head. She, I think we can mark her up slightly. The problem is with her, Graham, I can see going forward with this hood, it's going to be keeping a lid on her, isn't it? Yeah, I, I wonder if eventually that, that um, John Gosser might be able to get rid of this hood, you know, if he can settle her down over, over the... Obviously, she's still only a two-year-old, very uh, young horse, still probably quite bolshy and ready to go. Maybe if she, if she 
quietens down as she gets older, she will be capable of improving. She reminds me a little bit of, uh, remember what's called Journey? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a relation, isn't it? Full yeah. sister, yeah. Yeah, and very similar type running in the hood. And, and that all suddenly took off, didn't she, Journey? She yeah, got yeah, better. Yeah. She, 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 mm, she day, did. She? Yeah. Now, this one looks a bit more of a speed influence, doesn't it? And it will be about settling down, so maybe a mile two next year. And the market, Neil, because uh, I think throughout that race, Shane Cross exuded most confidence yeah it's really interesting actually the way we said that this might turn out because the one two three at halfway were the final one two three so they were all last um so they've definitely come from off the pace here but saying that pretty gorgeous only hit a high of five in running so four to one dubai fountain on that far side she stuck to her guns really well she hit a low of five as well indigo girl hit a low of two but the story is Snowfall, who hit, who hit a low of 1.57. She hit What's she been doing, Snowfall? Off. Let's have a look at her form. Of course, she was way behind Shale. The four are actually she? quite clear of the rest mm. there. So Shale's the disappointment in the race. I think we can say that along with Isabella Giles. I think it's she, the ground for her, though, again. Ground and I think probably the track. She didn't look like mm. she liked the, the dip. First mention of the dip we've had mm. here so far on the show. When he come on out of it, she was just all at sea there a little bit. Zabil Queen, I think the limitations starting to show there a little bit for Roger, Cos, uh, for Roger Varian as well. Dubai Fountain, what a lovely race she's run. Yeah, run a cracker making the best use of that strip of ground where all of the winners... Like, you watch that race back and then you wonder why Let's those drawn low didn't stay on the rail. Oh, and, <laughs> and, and you know what? We're seeing in the paddock, the two brothers, Donica and Joseph, together. Donica sort of turn around and <laughs> uh, eyebrows up. But you don't often see Joseph O'Brien giving it some. And mm. after last weekend, yeah. she was due to run in the pre-Marcel Boussac. She would have been favourite for that on atrocious ground. She's gone all the way over to France. She's coming. We've got to give her another couple of lengths, Graham, for that, haven't we? Yeah, you would have thought so. I mean, he, he's having a great time, isn't he, Joseph, now? Really kicking on, not just with um, this horse here, but obviously uh, the St. Ledger winner. Uh, uh, he's got a real, real strong story. And Shane Cross, what a story that is, mm. of course. Uh, you know, asymptomatic with COVID-19 on the eve of the St. Ledger. Tom Marcon gets a ride. We all saw what happened there. Yeah. Uh, and it's really you know, good from Joseph O'Brien as well. It's really noticeable, his... his his stable, his yard, his sort of spread of owners. They're not all tables or magnet horses. He's got a lot of outside owners and, and, and he's winning with them all. But yeah, great for Shane Cross, um, Shane Cross in terms of the group one that he's got there. Yeah, what's the betting that they're going to have a little share of this going forward through the winter, I think? Uh, so let's talk about next year, shall we, Neil Hubbard? Yeah, just waiting um, to get some prices. While just Neil waits moment. for the anti-post quotes, which we're going to be getting this weekend, guineas... Well, yeah, she looks, she looks it. I wonder if she'll get any further as well. She, she certainly stayed a mile very well there. And you would normally say that Philly's mile uh, winners would get, get further at three. Yes, and I'm just looking at the, uh, well, on the dam side, the dam's by Compton Place, who, you, if, if you don't know, really, really quick horse, but it's by Lawman, a French derby winner. So, yeah, mile two, I think, at the upper limit, wouldn't mm, you? Yeah, yeah, possibly. I, I, I know, I'm, I'm not a massive pedigree punter myself. I tend you to, like to prefer what you see with your eyes. Yeah, and I tend to around. delve into, to, but that is There are two tribes. So in there, terms of, yeah. like, French derby by a sprinter then, so the mile trip of the guineas does look the obvious starting point for next year then. Do you think right? she'll want cutting the ground? than the guineas though because like yeah, we were saying she, she has been beaten by Shao on better ground I think you would give her one more chance on fast ground because at the Curra in the Moy glare she got it was a bit bumper car wasn't it like Thunder Moon my goodness me what the price is that going to do for the Dewhurst favourite tomorrow could Joseph O'Brien I'm hoping so take out the I Dewhurst if, tomorrow um, a bit like Iridessa last year she might be one for the Breeders' Cup because it's at Keeneland this year and in the autumn there you sometimes get a bit of cut and it's not like it's going to be at Santa Anita with baking hot ground so do you think um, they'd go to the well again in the Breeders' Cup do you know. think that's possible? But then, she, if she wouldn't have run here, she would have run in. The, like she wouldn't have run here if she'd have ran last week, would she? So. Joseph O'Brien is in situ at Newmarket. You will be able to get all the post-race quotes in your members section. You can, of course, from six o'clock tonight, get all the tips for tomorrow from Tom Segal. Paul Keeley, you've done a couple of previews. You previewed the sprint trophy yeah, tomorrow. The, the, yeah, the sprint trophy at York. Yeah, I did yeah. a little bit of draw analysis uh, in the um, in the paper on the website uh, for members. So. From yeah. 6 o'clock you can get that, uh, from 9 o'clock you can get the digital edition as well. Look in the analysis section, you'll see the post-race quotes right at the bottom. Will Pretty Gorgeous go straight into winter quarters? Will she go to the Breeders' Cup as Neil? We've got some prices, out? we've got some prices if you want. So uh, going back to Saffron Beach is 16s from 40s for the 1,000 guineas. Hmm. Um, McFabulous, 12s now for the Stayers Hurdle um, wow. from 16s. And the 1,000 guineas, Pretty Gorgeous is 6 to 1 from 14s, and for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile is 4s from 8s. 
Indigo Girl 8 for the 1,000 guineas. No. So she's done her... Well, based on the betting, she's done her prospects. No I could see there. Indigo Girl going to the States, couldn't you? George Drawbridge, of course, yeah. American owner. That's and possible, yeah. She looks like a bit of a now, bit slightly more of a now horse for me. Yeah. yeah. Although I might be completely wrong there, but we've got that coming up, haven't we? That's what, the second weekend of November, of course. Keeneland, we go back to again. The ground can go soft there as well, so I'm sure that'll have connections. My, what a meeting that's going to be over there this year, this mm. crazy year that we're having. Uh, shall we have a little recap of what we've had so far then? That was pretty um, fever pitch action there, wasn't it? Did you get on the winner? Keep your socials coming in. We've got the 410, of course. We've got a little bit of time to digress. We can give you some social comments. YouTube or Facebook Live, whatever you're doing. Twitter, hashtag RP Live with the Betfair Exchange. Let us know. You're out there. We'll give you a shout out. What have we seen so far then? Highlight thus far away from the Phillies Mile. Uh, away from the Phillies Mar, it has to be Mac Fabulous, doesn't it? That was the standout performance. Obviously, I, I was against him, but uh, you can't take anything away from the way that he did it. I mean, he's carrying a penalty, and he's gone through the race really well, jumped yeah. very well. Uh, this is the one thing that that has really improved, isn't it, uh, 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 about Mac Fabulous? Is, is the way the way he jumps. Now, um, the only thing that, that would would sort of get get in my mind is is sometimes. Paul Nichols likes to take them straight over fences, doesn't he? Yeah, yes. Rather than just go uh, hurdle, then stayers. Uh, he tends to usually, like Denman, went straight over fences after his novice year. Some of his mm. great chasers, they went fencing after their novice year. So I know that Mac Fabulous is still a novice now, but he is obviously not going to be a novice come the Cheltenham Festival. He's six, isn't he? And I've got this big thing about six. I don't want to be... If I've got a novice, oh, Graham, over hurdles, and he's a six-year-old, and, uh, and I'm going into the winter as a seven-year-old. You know, I'm about to turn seven. I, I want my chases to be going into novice chases as a seven-year-old. Mm. I don't want to be an eight-year-old. Eight-year-olds rarely win. Mm. You know, okay, we've seen the same kind of lights of that. They can, but of course, we don't if you've got a very classy horse. But I like my chases to be six going on seven if they're novices. Well, what's going on in my head is, is to, if, if I was training him, then I, I would probably be looking to send him over fences this season. This licence is a gimme, isn't it? I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would probably be looking to send him over fences this season. Now, is there a reason why Paul Nichols, who, who generally would be usually just sending them straight over fences, is there a reason why he, he, he's maybe not sending this also over fences this Because he could have taken aim at the very good novice chase at this meeting, which is run tomorrow. And I you've believe, got to remember, it? like last season, you were saying, Dave, that Matt Fabulous took some time, really, to find his feet over hurdles. He took some time... Maybe, I don't know, I'm just obviously casting the Spurs and just guessing, but maybe he just sees a little bit to work on in, on his schooling over fences and thinks that maybe another year over hurdles would benefit him. I just wonder if he's the most natural jumper of a fence. And let's face it, who won the Stayers hurdle this year? Can you even remember? It was yeah. Rebecca Curtis. Yeah, Listen to Gar Oscar. Listen yeah. to Gar Oscar. There's a whole, listen, but it's not all about the domineering, you know, yeah. Thistle Cratch Paisley Parts anymore, is it? Paisley Parts has got a lot to prove, hasn't it? I think going back, maybe, uh, listen, that was a, a, a bit of an aberration probably at Cheltenham. Oh, I can still smell the burnt fingers now. But there is room at the top. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's a wide open division, isn't it? I'm not sure how long he remains a novice for. I don't know if it's till, because he's, he's, he's going to have to go into open company now. But I agree with Graham in terms of it's weird that, or weird, but it, it's interesting that he hasn't gone over fences immediately. And if that is like massive forward planning with an eye on the festival and like, because you never know, you might get a Paisley Park come out of the woodwork. But as, as it seems now, there doesn't appear to be... Normally, you, some, you sometimes get stayers, hand, um, stayers hurdles candidates come about because chasers don't work out from the novice chasers and then they revert back to hurdles. So um, he's obviously... He, he, Paul Nichols has said that he sees him as a stayers hurdle candidate and you wouldn't think he would have said that unless that's going to be the aim, really. So we're talking jumpers again. Isn't that fantastic here on Racing Post Live? 12 to 1 for the stayers hurdle. Are you tempted? Is that a crazy price? Or indeed, should we be looking at something like the RSA or the Marsh Chase? Let us know out there. Shall we now talk about tomorrow, chaps? Mm. Neither of you are in uh, the studio, I'm sad to say, tomorrow. Um, your luck might improve from the sofa. I don't know. You haven't so. a few beers tonight. I <laughs> clean the slate. Uh, what about tomorrow? Let's talk about the Jewhurst, guys. Get a thought from the panellists on the Jewhurst. Graham Robway. Well, yeah, I mean, it, look, it looks an absolutely cracking race, doesn't it? As the Jewhurst is every year. But this year, we've got real strength in depth. 14 runners. <laughs> yeah, 14 runners in the Jewhurst. Usually, there's a hot favourite like last year, Pin the Two Bowls. And it's absolutely outstanding now. Don't get me wrong. Thunder Moon looks like a good horse. But... He doesn't look absolutely outstanding in the same way that Pinatubo did last year. Now, and, and there's so many exciting horses in that race, aren't there? The likes of like Alchemate and 
you know, supplemented for Marcus oh. Drummond. Great year for Marcus Drummond again, isn't it? Absolutely yeah, brilliant. and uh, I, I can't wait to see him again. I thought he looked fantastic in, in the Millery. Stepping up in trip. We've got uh, Cadillac, for example. You quite like Cadillac coming back in trip. Yeah, Cadillac's got a huge chance. And uh, it's just oh, it's just a cracking race. Whoever wins it is obviously going to be favourite for the Guineas. Uh, no yeah. doubt about it. Whoever wins it is going to be favourite. But they won't be like an outstanding favourite for the Guineas. No. You could easily see a horse losing tomorrow in the Dewars and, coming and back. then coming back to win the Guineas, couldn't you? Mm-hmm. Giving a bit away, Kevin Morley tomorrow, I've seen a preview for his 10-year trend section. He suggests on RPRs this isn't quite the Dewhurst that we should be excited about. Nothing's quite high, hit that level yet. We're hoping it's Thunder Moon. I think, can you, Neil, we were very, very keen on him after he won the National Stakes. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting him on slightly slower ground because... He's a Zoffany, and yeah, Zoffany, they love a bit of cut, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I just think the, 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 the reason why he sort of... I don't know, has leapt up into everyone's sort of psyche here is because of the turn of foot that he showed over in Ireland last time. And it's just a case of whether that sort of attribute or that skill set of his can be replicated on much slower ground. Like, we don't know. Like, we're not saying he can't, but it's really... Like, the whole race is really interesting. You've got a horse in here, St Mark's Basilica, currently on the exchange, he's 24s. If you go back a week, he was due to run in the... um, in the Lagardère on yes. um, Art Weekend. And he was like, favourite 2-1? to one, Long perhaps. chance loss. Yeah, long chance loss is uh, Newmarket's gain. But he was he, he was favourite for that. And yet he comes over here in a similar sort of, um, in a similar race with regards to stature of race. And he's, 20, and he's bigger than 20s from yeah. twos, which just shows that, yes, on ratings, perhaps if that is true, it's not quite the race. But it doesn't have to show the number of contenders that are in here. Uh, who, who are going to be throwing their hat in the ring for next year. And as Graham says, you could run an absolute stormer here, finish fifth or sixth, and still be a horse to take away Come from next year. Come out and win a trial. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. so we're talking about 2,000 guineas tomorrow. We've seen the potential 1,000 guineas is now the die is cast, isn't it? What a race that's going to be here tomorrow. Three, 2.55, I think, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Here on Racing Post Live. I was going to say 3.35 because the feature handicap, the biggest staying handicap of the year, I think we can all agree, is indeed the Cesarowicz. Graham Robway, where's the, where's the pin looking? <laughs> Well, I, I, I've been now uh, swayed by Paul Keely, I was talking to earlier, who tells me that the draw's not as big a deal as it, as it has been in the past. I don't know. What do you think, Dave? I, I, I think it is. I think <laughs> a high draw is probably, for some reason, which is on the outside, uh, for some reason, those dr- uh, horses drawn wide seem to have been dominated. I always them. thought a low draw was... <laughs> it's only better. aimed to prosper, I think, and, and Big Easy, who won... Uh, the only, uh, there's three of the last ten. You've had to be double figures. I don't know why. It's weird, isn't it? In these staying ways, you see it at Royal Ascot as well, in the Ascot Stakes as well. Uh, the, you you want to be wide. Is that is that because there's so much jostling on the inside early on? It's going to be a rough race. Well, and, and a lot of these stayers, of course, they don't possess huge turn of foots, do they? So if you end up getting a long way behind on the inside... Then you're not. It's not very easy to make ground on a stayer, is yeah, it? Yeah, build me up Buttercup. If you remember last year, Willie Mullins is going for a hat trick, and he's got great white shark, just about favouritism. I think Neil will tell us in a second for tomorrow. Says Zarowicz, three thirty-five. If, if you remember last year, she was well fancy when she had Ryan Moore. She made such a huge effort to get there, petered out on similar ground to what they're going to encounter tomorrow. Mm, yeah, and, and we all know though that that whatever Mullins runs in in these sort of staying races, they're either going to be favourite just because he trains them, and rightly so because he has got an amazing record. Not only obviously in in the top jumps races, but in the top flat staying races too. Yeah, this is going to be a feverish betting race. Neil Hubbard will give us a market update in a second, but we have still got one more race, don't forget. Bringing the curtain down is the old Rowley Cup. Take your pick at 410 Newmarket. We'll be covering and previewing that just after a market update on the says. Yeah, Great White Shark um, is, well, he's top of the list, but actually called Train is top of the market, 9.6. Great White Shark, 10.5. Uh, Leon Cavallo, 11.5. Not so sleepy. 13.5, and then you're into, well, Medane, 14s, and then 20s, or bigger the rest, really. So um, a bit like the race at York we had um, earlier today, um, where we had 7-1 to one the field, we've got about 8.5 to 1 the field. It here. ought to be that, though, isn't it? I mean, Coltrane, yeah, again, not giving too much away, but... Um, Kevin Morley says he, he he ticks a lot of tips in his in his trends. Uh, I spoke to Shane Foley this morning. He's got, got of course got Cadillac. He's got Millar running right, returning to the track. He's on one as well called Lynch with Gold for Mark Johnson, mm. uh, who also ticks a lot of trends. I think is a course winner as well. He's got that form of that Princess Zoe. It's form everywhere. I like I quite like a Diocletian uh, for Andrew yep. Balding. All right, Wojcicki, the forgotten horse, they yeah. both come from the old Borough Cup. We saw that given a boost earlier when Uke and Glenn won uh, the group yeah, race, of course, the yeah. Cumberland Lodge. Listen, that was a bit of a, a, a soft race in the end with Logician blowing out, but 
and classy handicap that, wasn't it? What a race to look forward to. So t top of the pile. I, I, I quite fancy Leon Cavallo. Uh, he was obviously very impressive when he won at, um, at Haydock, was it? Back on the flat. And he's, Closed up. Yeah, he's got, um, he's got some good form over jumps. Pipeys now. have always mm. targeted this race, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Great, great on the flat, wasn't he? Martin Pipe and David Pipe, obviously, yeah. taken over since. But... Um, I tell you what would be an interesting market now. I, I, I know you haven't got one now, but well, it would, who's going to win it? Is it going to be a flat trainer or a jump trainer? It tends to be jump trainers. <laughs> what do you reckon? Not so sleepy's in it, of course, as well, isn't he coming back? Yeah. Huey Morrison. What do we call him? <laughs> Dual purpose. <laughs> don't know, don't don't that would be, what would that be? Like <laughs> void? I don't know. Yeah, the top four in the market are 2-2 two -two between flat and jumps. You've got Willie Mullins, um, Andrew Borden, David Pipe, and Huey Morrison, if we say yeah. flat. That. Paul yeah. Keeley's very keen on a horse called Whirling Dervish. I can tell you that that is being backed as well. Six o'clock in the Members Club. You'll be able to see what Paul and Tom and all the guys from Ireland are tipping as well. Loads and loads of racing. What the Jumps Boy is going for. Really exciting weekend coming up. We have got one more, though, mm. at Newmarket. And we've got about 15 minutes to preview it. I think we're going to need 15 minutes, Jumps, because <laughs> this is a race genuinely where I could have backed every single runner. I could have made a case for it. It's the old Rolly Cup. 4.10, very valuable, three-mile uh, three-year-old, one mile four handicap. Neil Hubbard, take it away. Um, well, it's 8.8 .8 the field, um, which wow. backs up exactly what you've just said there, Mr. Orton. So, um, Shandos, 8.8, .8, favourite. Um, although it seems a bit strange to call him favourite, given <laughs> the way the market is. But then Surrey Pride, 9.6. Brilliant Light, 10. Luganini, 10. Kips, 11. Dublin Dice, 11.5. And... I'm just going to give a mention to one because we'll probably come into it right at the bottom. Aha. Raven's Ark is 100, and I think that might be where we'll preview the race, but I can see us maybe having a five or a tenner on Raven's Ark, but we'll get to that. But um, I can see us maybe throw in a five or a tenner um, onto Raven's Ark as a bit of a sporting play. Yeah, okay. I like the Raven. I hope she takes off. He takes off as well. I think mm. it's a filly that holds. Uh, before we get to what Graham Robbay thinks and Neil's play, let's see what Mr Keeley thinks about the old Roly. I'm not usually one for backing favourites in these big handicaps, but Surrey Pride blew me away at Chester last time. It's not very often you can come from behind as he did from last place uh, and come through and win as easily as he did. He's gone up in the waist, which is understandable. Uh, his trainer Joe Sweet says that the November handicap could be the task, could be the target for him, uh, and he needs to go up in the handicap just to get into that race. I think he'll go very close here. The step up to a mile and a half will suit, and soft ground is absolutely fine. Cheers, Kills. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about Surrey Pride because you like this horse as well. Now th we had the pleasure of uh, brunching with Mr. Keeley <laughs> today. It wasn't that glamorous, let me tell you. It was an old calf, but it was fantastic, by the way, wasn't it? But. He was saying, we, we said, why, what is it about this horse? Why? And he said, well, when I looked at the horse yesterday, it, it was 10 to 1. Tom Segal's gone for it as well. You like it. Everyone out there likes it. Deeply impressive at Chester last time. Were you expecting this SP? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he's kind of about the price I thought he would be. I mean, I was talking about brunching with Keeley. I mean, it's not as glamorous as many would think. I mean, you... You would think to yourself that it might be some really, you know, great brunch, but it was a bit more like the um, Apprentice Cafe, wasn't it, where the where the losers go on the Apprentice. Yeah, let me tell you, if, if I'd have known what you were going to come up with this afternoon, it would have been fine. <laughs> but uh, no, I, um, I I like Surrey Pride. The amount what <clears throat> Kiel, Kiel's is on it, price wise is on it. It always worries me when everyone goes for it because yeah. I start to wonder <clears throat> if it's Overpair. become a bit too obvious. But um, I mean, it was knockout impressive when it won at. Um, at Chester last time, Surrey Pride, it really was good. It just uh, went through the race like a, a quality animal and, and I just thought turning foam, we had an awful lot on there, just carved through the field and one on the bridle pretty much and this is what, up two furlongs in trip. It just looks like yeah. an obvious improver. Yeah, James Byrne, Lambon's napped it. I'm just mm. having a look at the tips. Uh, uh, top speed have got napped it as well. So there's a lot of love for Shandos out as well. But Neil Hubbard, uh, sorry, Pride, is it just levelling out a little bit? It looked like it could go off a real hot pot. Yeah, when, when I was reading in the members club last night that Keeley, price-wise, then I saw, I think this morning, Hugh Taylor on at the races had tipped okay. it as well. So everyone had And he was into... I want to say about six, seven to one, that sort of price. It's now right out again to like eight to one, if not a little bit bigger than eight to one, which considering the whole gamble started when he was around 10 to one ish, he sort of, yeah, it definitely has leveled out, albeit is shorter than when everybody was tipping it. But head to the market, 
along with Shandos now, joint favourites, the pair of them, eight to one. Joe Tweet, the trainer, he, he, he gets these Surrey horses, don't they? Some of them end up, you know, down under and the likes. A, a, a lot of them, you know, some big money offers as well. I, I, at, just at the prices, he put me off because the, the horse that he beat last time, albeit impressively, don't really come from off the base and do that at Chester do unless you're a pattern performer. It has been well turned over since on the all-weather. And again, I just looked down this, as I said, this race, and I'm like, give, make a case for him, make a case for her, make a case for that, make a case for this. Um, Brian Meehan, a uh, friend of the post, he's got Cepheus in here, a horse I could see going really, really well. You know, Brian meehan has got two plays tomorrow, only two two-year-olds coming out. Um, is it Devious Light or something like that in the uh, in the Dewhurst? Mm. Which he's got. I mean, Brian is having a great year. Cepheus, uh, I was on it when it won at Glorious Goodwood. It's got form with a lot of these. That's a sixteen to one shot, Neil. I mean, Nazrawi for John Gosden, one or two for John Gosden in here. John Gosden, two outsiders in this, and Ravens Ark. I mean, let's go for the Ravens Ark argument. Why do we like Ravens Ark? Well, he ran behind Shandos at Ascot on his last start, didn't he? Um, and he was just. A massive eye catcher. Watch that it day. back. Watch it back. He sort of tried to come up the rail, didn't he? And then he didn't. And then he had to switch out. And um, he was just passing everything in the straight. And he eventually finished fourth. Um, but he was gaining on those a- a- ahead of him with every stride. Now he was one pound out the handicap that day, which means he was carrying one pound more than what his handicap marks said that he should do. Which is always interesting when a trainer does that because it's it strikes you as like perhaps strange because he's pitching him in at a level that he's not on paper at least good enough to run against and the same applies here in fact today's even worse because he's six pound out of the weights now he's uh, William Cox the claimer is on board he takes off three so he's three pound wrong um and in a race such as this that's so competitive there's absolutely you know on the face of it there's absolutely no way that he should be in the mix here which is sort of why he is a triple figure price but A, the fact Huey Morrison, who is a pretty shrewd operator, is doing this anyway, and on that Ascot run, look, you, you need a lot to go right for him to, but he's 100 to 1, so you're not like, we're not talking you need to have a big bet on here to find out. You know, for the sake yeah. of a fiver at 100. Mm-hmm. He's shown that he can mix it in this premier yeah. handicap company, hasn't he? He's still got a mark of what, you know, around about 74, I think he is, isn't he? They actually dropped him a pound, would you believe, the handicapper, for that luckless run. He, he's... He's two from two this year on the All Weather. Yeah, he could have easily just mapped out a winter campaign for this, couldn't he? Mopped up race around Kempton and the likes. Graham, can you see this outside, or are we mad? <laughs> it doesn't sound like the most ridiculous argument, but it is that sort of race where you can make an argument for ten, as you've already said, uh, Dave. I mean, I, Oh, yeah, I, I wouldn't put you off anything at that sort of price. In fact, when any, anyone ever emails in into Racing Live at racingpost.com uh, on the live tipster with horses that are like 33, 40 to 1, I mean, you'll very rarely see me turn around and say that's got no chance mm. because I've just seen them wing in before. And I just think it's always worth having a pop at a horse mm. at that price. You can have a, like, like Neil said, you can have a fiver on it to win, what, 500 quid? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's not a lot to be lost. So, how shall there? we play? Come on, let's hone in on Ravens Art. We're going for the outsider in the last race of the day here on Racing Post Live. We must be mad, but we've had a good day so far. We'll play up a little bit. Yeah, so Ravens Arc is right down the bottom of the market, is into 90 now, which is 89 to 1. But I think for the sake of a fiver for the charity um, at that price, yeah. um, so 90, we'll have £5 win on Raven's Art to win £445. Um, we'll place that bet. Who else should we mention in this race? Well done, Neil, for getting that on. Listen, I, w- I, would, I would recommend having a good look at him in the place market as well. Yeah. Because really, if he, if he reproduces that run with a bit more luck, he ought to be having I mean, some he's sort nine of to one. Here. He, he, he's nine to one to finish in the first five. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's quite attractive, isn't it? Yeah. He's also got Kips in here. <laughs> uh, we have a forgiving move. Was it the last chance saloon for Kips last time? Graham? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a funny horse, and he? he got lots of ability, but... Uh, they put on the pieces, uh, didn't they, last time? No, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, he is a master at this sort of horse, getting them right, isn't he, Huey? But I don't know. What about Straight of Hormores? Uh, that, w- that was quite impressive. When Jed O'Keefe won, and Jamie Spencer. Yeah, when he won at Doncaster, he beat mm. a horse called Derivo, who I think was almost favourite for the Cambridgeshire. Cambridge, yeah. Was it yeah. next time out? They obviously ran disappointingly, but... I'm inclined to forgive a lot of those disappointing runs in the yes. Cambridgeshire because it was a funny race. Draw horse, race. Yeah, the horse came up the stand side rail, made or won by Majestic a mile Dawn. Or Majestic Dawn. Uh, I wouldn't put straight of four moz out of it if he yeah. improves for the step up to a mile it's and a half. It's this sort of race, isn't it? Absolutely. What are you going for then in the last race here on Racing Post Live? Let us know. You've got a chance to get your socials in and we've got two coming up. Seamless link, Rob Lee. Let's have a look. That nearly caught me out of this one. My, my eyes are... Does that say Thomas Dewate? 
That's it, I think, yeah. Does that say Thomas Dew 8? It does. Thomas J double eight. They're telling me. <laughs> you can tell I'm technically up with the world. Luganini, Thomas says, anyway, each way for me, both its wins come on soft ground. Thanks, Thomas, for getting that in. A word on Luganini. Roger Charlton. Yeah, no, not without a chance. No, very similar to, to, to many of the other sort of improving type. I, I know you go through it loads of times. Uh, Char- Roger Charlton's one of those trainers, isn't he? He's just good with this sort of horse. He's been know. given a break since his, his up and trip, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah. Soft ground, Neil, any money for that? Uh, 9.4, so yeah, not without um, support. A little bit worried about the trip. I didn't know whether quite to stay, but yeah, the ground and everything else is... Holly tips. Doyle factor for Thomas008 with a J in there. OK, let's see who else is coming up on the screen. Let's have a look. Mark Smith comes back onto the show. Kingbrook, yeah, I want to talk about him. And Shandos, great timing, Mark. I think you've got two solid chances there. Uh, which one are we going to go for first? We've talked about Ravens Ark, of course, and Kips, both beaten behind Shandos last time. He came from a long way back at Ascot, didn't he? Which you don't yeah, often yeah, do in Yeah, the no, uh, another Roger Varian special in one of those big sort of mile, half mile, six furlong races. He almost won one today with Z Band. Oh, yeah, could could improve, couldn't he? He could say the same thing about every every horse in this race, couldn't And we? what about Kingbrook? He's very interesting horse, this. I wonder whether his ex marks Johnson's gone to Ian Williams. Brilliant training room winners. Roger Brookhouse. I wonder whether this might be getting ready for some sort of a, a hurdling campaign. They obviously think he's, I don't know, I want to say a bit better than that, but I'd love to see him over hurdles at some point in the jump season because this is a lovely, honest horse, isn't it, Neil? Yeah, he could end up being a nice little dual purpose horse for them, something like that. But um, cool. yeah, he's he's got form behind the right horses hasn't he was he also behind um he was behind bright light as well brilliant light two brilliant runs light, back sorry. Yeah. yeah 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 um of course the Sandown. opposes yeah so yeah another one that you can't see 17.5 you can't sit here and say he's not going to win yeah um, that's wrong the one that i do half like in here is um a horse called Lunsey's for oh, the Crisfords. Man. how impressive was that on polytrack last yeah. time i just think he's got a really interesting profile one is he won on his debut and he was pitched straight into listed level behind Mishrift. So he's clearly fought a lot of to make that sort of leap. He was well beaten that day and then gelded. So, you know, right. things didn't work out. But he's come back. He won mile two at Haydock on soft ground, taking on older horses. And he was one of the first off the bridle, but he kept going. And like the further he went, the better he looked. He went up in the weights and went to Kempton, up in trip at Kempton. Only a small field, but super impressive at Kempton that day. He's up in um, trip a little bit further again, up in the weights, obviously. But he's another one of these like progressive sorts like they all are, are in here. But the soft ground and the extra distance will definitely suit him. Um, he's 15, 14 to 1. I reckon he's a really interesting one. Callum Shepard's having a really good year, isn't he? He had that purple patch for Godolphin and Cy Bin Saru. Got a lot of time for Callum. So, and again, come back to Simon and get Chris with this is the sort of race that they ought to be taking out. He was deeply impressive, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, very, very impressive. But um, it's an interesting race from like a perspective of are you going to take on like the solid, uh, staying, grinding horses that you know are very tough and battle hardened, like you like Sisyphus and your Kingbrooks and horses like that who are very, very tough, or are you going to go with these improvers? I've got some breaking news here. We've got some breaking news here. On RP Live, if you are if you're tuning in wherever you're tuning in, we have some huge news, and it's been this sort of day for you. I've got to be honest. <laughs> this is if you could have you couldn't make up this sort of day for you. There's a horse has been retired. <laughs> Guess which horse has been retired? <laughs> no, Magician. It's Pinatubo. Oh um, no! The horse that no. Graham Robway. After his defeat in France last time. Well, I wasn't wrong. In the hands of Persian King <laughs> would never be beaten again. In some ways, <laughs> you've been absolutely on the mark. That's, oh, is it, oh. I'm assuming guys in the studio are telling me this, we're breaking it. Is that some sort of old retired to stud? I mean, is that, what was that, are they worried about the ground at Ascot, Palace Pier? Down, ding, ding, round two. Oh, Rob's the Champions Day of that wonderful matchup. You were looking forward to unleashing on him, weren't you? Oh. It's been this sort of day for you, hasn't it? It's been this sort of day, and and that is so disappointing because I, I know everyone's going to say that, that that he has fulfilled his potential, but for me he didn't. Like for me, he still had more to offer. For me, he he could still go on and prove that he was the champion miler. That run at France last time, he should have won that race, and and I just thought he looked a star that day. Obviously, we know I know that he was a star juvenile, champion juvenile. And everyone can say well, he goes to stud with, with a great record, which he does. There's no doubt about it. He was it. a Group 1 winner this year, of course. But yeah. it's just so... 
disappointing to see a horse that I just had thought had more in the tank. I was really looking forward to Palace Pair Pinatubo oh, next yeah. week, weren't you? Yeah. Is, is, is he injured or anything? Or well, we're not retired, sure. Not we're, sure. We're, okay. we're, you can check out on RP a website, of course. That'll be breaking right now. It'll be, it'll be somewhere in the paper tomorrow amongst all the news. Last yeah. year's Dewhurst winner then. Didn't that quite is mix at it least the, the first thing I've got right all day, Dave. Yeah, you, he's <laughs> never going to be beaten <laughs> he's again. He's never going to be beaten right. again, are right. you? I suppose you were right there. I love it how you turned that round, <laughs> Mr. Graham Robway. <laughs> so, Pinatubo, we salute you. Fantastic duos win last year. What a ride he took us on as a two-year-old for Charlie Appleby. I'm sure he'll have a great career at start ahead of him. My goodness me. What are your favourite Pinatubo memories? Get them in. We know you're on the chat there on Facebook Live and YouTube comments. We will read them overnight. What's your greatest Pinatubo moment? Would he have beaten Palace Pier last week, next week? Unbelievable scenes. Does that harden up Palace Pier, Neil Hubbard? Uh, he probably does. We can have a look in a sec, but there's a big market move for Ooh. the wrong reasons here. Surrey Pride is out to 14.5. Whoa. So it's almost doubled in price. The money's um, on, it's fighting out. That must mean that Brilliant Light and Luganini. Yeah, our... Lu Luganini is into the. Mu well, uh, Shandos is into 6 to 1, and Luganini is into 30. Who's going to go off clear favourite here, Neil Hubbard? Shandos, it must be one. Shandos, I think. Shandos. But then Kips is into 8.6, so people aren't giving up on Kips, but Surrey Pride is incredibly weak here. What about the Ravens? Where's the Ravens? Yeah, is the it still Ra the outsider? No, Ra Ravens is into 70 from 100, so um, it's being, uh, being nibbled at. It's probably all those fivers that are just sort of <laughs> chipping away. Into 60 now. You know what it's like if we don't mention horses here on, on RP Live, they tend to come good. Doubling dice, Andrea Atzani mm. for Hugo Palmer. He's looked the real deal last couple of times. Yeah, yeah, another one, isn't he? I, I always think with Hugo Palmer's runners, they're, they're a bit better when they're coming off a longer break. You know what I mean? Like, when, they're coming up, when they're coming off a nice, a nice long break, they tend to go well fresh. Yeah, the guys at MyRacing.com, I seem to remember, I was told that they like Tritonic in this. They did have an each-way double, actually. Uh, it was in the 235 at York, which didn't come good. It was an unpronounceable horse of Stuart Williams. And uh, Tritonic for the guys at MyRacing.com. So MyRacing had the uh, classic one of the when you put the shorties in and one just failed because oh, they had pretty gorgeous... Oh, magician, wasn't yeah. it? That would have been a treble. They had McFabulous, of course, 315 and pretty gorgeous game. Oh, as well. always so you doubled it up as well, guys, at my racing. That's pretty painful, that one. It is, it is. It? It is, oh, it is. The shortest John, one. John Gosling's mm. had, going back to the old role, he's had four runners in this, three of place. Why is Indigo Lake, and last time out we're in Nasrahi, really consistent, Hamdan Al Maktoum, owner of the year so far, Neil Hubbard. Why are they so big in the market? Yeah, Nasrahi is 19.5 and Indigo Lake is 42. So you can't give away the pair of them, really. Yeah, Indigo Lake comes in here after an all-weather win, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, um, and pretty impressive, really, that day. Um, there was nothing to dislike about that performance. Nuswari is super consistent. Ran behind Crystal Pegasus. I like Nuswari. Uh, yeah. it, was in a, it, was a, it was a Mickey Mouse race that day. Crystal Pegasus, he dictated. I think getting back on soft ground, he was going to be on my shortlist for this. Galata Bridge for Sir Michael Stout. Win, win, win on the all-weather. Yeah, I quite like him. He's been mopping up those... It's interesting. He's been mopping up these sort of smaller races at Wolverhampton and ended up with a mark of 91. Um, <laughs> which is they're off, they're off and running for the final race. RP Live. We die but we are off and away and looking at this it's going to be one heck of a call let me tell you that doubling dice for Hugo Palmer aforementioned at Zini looks like he's going to take it up brilliant light for Godolphin adopting a handy position as well really keen is Ifraj a horse that's been doing well on Polytrack recently looking for some of the big players straight of Hormuz Graham you mentioned him out the back with Surrey Pride yeah a bit free at the moment Surrey Pride but they seem to be going a fairly good pace don't they there's plenty of them up there although we've got a couple in behind is that Kingbrook Swift Sweated up quite badly, yes. pulling quite hard. Yeah, and also Galata Bridge is up there as well. Ryan Moore, he's taking a fierce old Nazrari, a little bit keen. Ravens Ark, Neil, nicely positioned. Bit of trouble there for Galata Bridge. Yeah, back on the inside, Ravens Ark, pretty much the same price. Tritonic's the big one, into like 14, 16 to 1, that sort of price. Luganini's solid at the top of the market still, and Kips is a little bit shorter. Has there yeah. been any big move for the front runners? Yeah, yeah, so I suppose, who is it? Brilliant Light is a lot shorter. So Brilliant Light was out to double figures, but is into 5, 6 to 1. He's leading. Double dice around the same price. So of the two at the front end... Uh, a brilliant light is the one that they want. And Luganini in third, but he was well back beforehand anyway. Yeah, a lot of social love for Luganini on there. Holly Doyle, always well placed, Holly, isn't she? She gets them out so well. Got a lovely stalking position in position three at the moment. So we've got around about a mile to go then. Looking for some of the big players out the back. Cepheus out the back. What a season he's had. Kips just lobbing along. Looks like they're going to try and kid him into contention. Lunsies as well. The Surrey Pride got a lot to do from there, Graham Rubway. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. He just seemed to lose about three or four places. Don't know whether he took a full step. Or, but uh, certainly 
wouldn't really want to be on him now, I don't think. They're, Sorry, Pride. They're really trapping now, Neil Hubbard. Raven's Ark, I tell you what, is coming with a little bit of a run. William Cox is just getting that one going. Four furlongs out. What's the market saying? Front runners all the way? Yeah, Luganini is still your market leader. Well, Kipps and Kingbrook. Kingbrook is the one that they oh, won. He's there was some social really love nice. out there for Ian Williams. He's the one that sweated up. He's going. Will it cost him towards the end? This has got, I tell you what, cracking finish all over it. Kipps is leaders. coming with a bit of a run. Call it Graham Robway. Yeah, looks like uh, Kingbrook, is it? They're staying on really powerfully isn't he in front oh he's going away Nazrahi no. down the outside here comes Lugnini Collie Doyle conjuring a late run out of this can't see too much coming from the back Kips is trying so is Indigo Row but let's have a look for this Kings are, this looks like it's all over social comment we had on this and Lugnini as well Kips doing his usual running on when it's all <laughs> too late once again another bridesmaid for him but is this going to be Ian Williams going to the finish it is fantastic Kingsbrook for Roger Brookhouse takes it out Lugnini second Kips in third look like Tritonic in fourth I thought you called that a little bit early there, Dave, for a minute, the way that Luganini was starting to motor at the end. But <laughs> He's no, in he was... front after the pull-up, isn't he? I'll yeah, tell you exactly. what, he's won a massive race. <laughs> yeah, Luganini has. Kingbrook matched at a high of 42 in running, but was always sort of front rank. Um, Luganini, what did he hit a low? 3.45. Um, another race, really, where those at the front sort of dominated again, really. And they went back to that far side this yeah, time. They did. I'll yeah. tell you what, boys, that's going to be a really strong form race, I think, isn't it? Because they have not dawdled, have they? And Kipps has had his, ch had, had his chance. Uh, so Kingsbrook, Kingbrook, that's going to perhaps he potentially talk them out of a hurdling campaign now. Oh, he is a re real big horse, though, isn't he? He does look like a real imposing type. And I think the reason he traded it so big in running there was because I was saying he, he sweated up quite badly yeah, people don't said. like to see the, the, the sweat all over the horses and, stop and he was fair and he was fairly keen as well uh, he still won the race quite well uh, I will, uh, it, as you say it depends on the horse doesn't it when it comes to sweating up and, and betting in running if you know that horse just sweats up normally it wouldn't usually worry you he's readily reversed that form with brilliant light hasn't he and he, he, he i mean let's just have a quick word for for Ian Williams, dual purpose trainer, if you like. He, he's just mustard, isn't he, with these horses that he inherits. I know some owners with Ian Williams, they, they talk about him so well. You know, he, come, he, he gives you the full service. And uh, Roger Brookhouse there, as we know, he's had some great jumpers over the years. That must have been what he, what he had in mind for him, wasn't he, when he left Mark Johnson. You know, Mark Johnson doesn't really train the mm -hmm. hurdlers, so I don't know, but... When you win a prize like that, 56 grand to the winner, happy days. Going to winter quarters, dreaming of some bigger prizes next year. Yeah, sort of like staying races. Maybe I'm not sure exactly what his pedigree is all about. But um, yeah, Kips has <laughs> run another one of those races he where he was he was definitely not as well positioned as the as the first two home. And he's made up a, a bit like chance in that race at Ascot where he spotted the leaders half a dozen lengths. And he's ran on really strongly again. They've, they obviously got rid of all the headgear today. And they just let him go without. Um, he's re he's another race and like another one of these big heritage handicaps where he's he just hit the bar a little bit, hasn't he? But, Kips yeah. doing what Kips does. Yeah, Could yeah. we see Kips well, having a know, little maybe. having a little bit of birch about him at some point? <laughs> maybe he's changed ownership, hasn't he, since mm. his last start? That's uh, that's in the uh, Delon de V. What yeah, uh, bit of an international campaign for him, maybe very possibly. Like that. Yeah. And again, he's the kind of horse that Australian handlers will be looking yeah. at thinking. I can definitely he get. He could the best be a Melbourne Cup type horse like that. I don't think he's rated high enough, perhaps, to get in. But that type of race, you could see him going well in next year, maybe. He's listen. I mean, look, we can you can keep hitting Kips with the you know not winning brush, but they've won a lot of money out of him this year, haven't they? He's always <laughs> there about these big handicaps. Well, yeah, you get. I mean, <laughs> as you say he had some great days out, but obviously not quite the same this year as it would have been normal years. But hopefully, when uh, we do all get back on the race course, you know, Kips will take you to a lot of the big gigs, won't he? Yeah, very much so. There's your result in the final race here on RP Live on this Friday. We've got tomorrow to come, of course. Do not forget that Dewhurst Day. I think we can call that Cesaro Witch Day. Get your selections in overnight. We'll try and get them up on the screen for you. Some great social comments then coming in I think we got the uh, the social trifecta there pretty much didn't we I think Tritonic Alan King another dual purpose mm -hmm. trainer does so well in these big handicaps as well strong form rates cheers guys yeah it's been good apart from the results well <laughs> well, will you be back in the gym tonight or are you yeah. going to take it out of the bar instead if you can go to the bar yeah take it out in the punch bag I think I'll, I'll need it OK, Graham, it's been great to have you on. We'll see you back, no doubt. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to jump season now. Yeah, can't wait. That might well be my next appearance in here, mightn't it? Hopefully the jumpers will bring us a bit of change of fortunes. Yes, very much. Neil Hubbard, you've come down out of your Betfair cupboard again for us, back up to Grantham for you, yeah. back on the train. Great to have you down. Have you enjoyed the day? Yeah, enjoy your day out. It's nice to get out of the uh, home office for a change, stretch the legs and all that, but it's been good fun, plenty of racing, been fast and furious, nine races. Um, 
Time's flown, but good stuff, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Neil. We'll see you later in the month as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Myself, Dave Orton, then signing off here on RP Live. What a day it has been. Pretty gorgeous. Does she win the 1,000 guineas? Joseph O'Brien, he's only got Thunder Moon tomorrow in the Dewhurst here on Racing Post Live.